Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, or the Seth Rokage. Today, we are joined by the ghost of Corey. Corey is not here this week, but we do wish him well. Uh, but I am joined by the non-ghost of Sarah over there in the top right. Fuck Trump. <laughs> and then the bot. Oh, wait. M- Mesa, your text is all messed up. You're not Blaine. <gasps> oh You're Mesa. God. Blaine is here with yeah. us in spirit. She is here with say. us in spirit. Oh, no. I was- I was oh. gonna say I'm a bit of a half ghost. I could have. You're a half ghost. You're, you're yes, channeling Blaine. <laughs> Blaine is here with us in spirit. Gotta go, ghost. And uh, yes, as, as Sarah hinted, let, let's just go ahead and get this part out of the way. Uh, fuck Trump. We did Hey-o, it. It's a good day it. today. Yeah. I'm drinking tonight, boys. This is <laughs> actual wine. I promise. <laughs> um anyways just at the top of the show i just want to go and remind everyone to like comment subscribe on all the socials that includes twitter with our handles on the screen uh minus mesas who i will fix momentarily right, yeah. so that he is not blaine uh go and- people see my shit posts <laughs> <laughs> or go follow blaine too follow both That's of it. us there's or also follow our- both of them it's okay there's also YouTube where um, the podcast also get posted as well, as well as my video essays and chopped up segments from the podcast for easier uh, digestion. And what am I missing? YouTube, Twitter. No, I think that's about it. Free to make accounts on all of those. So go ahead and mm-hmm. follow us on there. Um, so to, this week is going to primarily be news. Uh, just because we were playing a little bit of catch up from last week, and a lot of this stuff is time sensitive, considering mm-hmm. uh, next gen is literally next uh, week. Dawn, dawn of the final week, gentlemen. Oh man, I need. <laughs> we are dawn of the final week. Uh, I need to play Majora's Mask again. I- I'm surprised mm-hmm. they haven't put out the 3DS remake on the Switch. I don't even need the 3D part. Just, just let me play that. Uh, just, just let me play that version. All right, so. First news article. Oh, thank you, uh, Paradise Lands, for following. Uh, big news that happened this week. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming to the PC. The worst and- kept secret in gaming. <laughs> I mean, it was inevitable. They e- e- even EA tried to like play it off as like, no, nah, we're not really interested in doing remasters. We're above that trend. Motherfucker. They're they just waiting. They obviously, and they, um, I believe they confirmed that they're working on another um, new new line Mass Effect under the very um, early in development. Yes, they, un- they un- gave one piece of concept art, mm-hmm. and uh, apparently this time it's also uh, Bioware proper, not a um, not a branch of it. Commun- uh, Mass Effect veterans, I believe the blog post said it's uh, it said like a small group of Mass Effect veterans are working on the next entry, but it's a very early, so they're uh, not like ready to speak about it. Sarah, do you want to go over some of those details there, such as the single-player DLC, the lack of a full-on remake, uh, while I go and fix our boy Mesa's uh, at, so he's no longer Blaine? (laughs) Yes. So, um, for those who don't know, it's going to... The one cool thing about this Legendary Edition is it's going to contain all single-player DLC. So, that includes all of the characters that were weirdly only available if you bought the game on day one like like a uh, zaid and stuff and stuff like that it's also coming with stuff like the citadel dlc and it's also coming with pre-order bonuses too which i think people are skipping over bioware basically said that it's including every piece of dlc that they've released for all three games which is a lot of stuff uh so the so like uh jose mentioned earlier it's not remakes either they're basically up resing every single game and then mass effect one is basically getting not remade but it's getting revamped revamped yeah to make it basically play better in this generation (laughs) because it's kind of the consensus between mass effect fans now and i can attest this as mass effect one kind of plays like garbo now it's not good mesa you are fixed Yay! So, yay! So not in the veterinary their, sense. So oh, a lot man. of their, um, a lot of their like hitting towards this remaster collection is going towards like uh, improving Mass Effect One and making it better to play, basically. Which I mean, for Mass Effect, I've never been a person to say you need to play Mass Effect One to play the others. But for those who haven't even played them, I think it's great that Mass Effect One is going to be like a lot better to play, especially since it's not too great now um the big thing that they've said though is that they're not ready to talk about ps4 or xbox one x um 
like uh upgrades yet if i remember the blog post said that they were going to talk about it later or, or like earlier next year which to me is really weird because the game's coming out spring of 2021 right. i so mean you if would they think were by that point it would have mm-hmm. the implements already in it so for those ooh, ooh, excuse me for those playing on the new consoles you're already going to be able to play it at like maybe 60 fps or 4k or mm-hmm. stuff like that so the fact that it's coming really late it's really funky I th- yeah, I, oh. if it's coming out this late, you would imagine like they, they would just push it to freaking uh, next gen. Like, like obviously, yeah, you can still release a version for for what's considered current, but why not take advantage of the time you're actually re- releasing it? Well, I mean, the one thing I can think of is that they want it to be as accessible as possible. So, making it look the best they can on PS4 and Xbox One, while also making it look really good on uh, PS5 and Xbox. Series S slash X is going to be maybe not their top priority. I mean, because the Series X, S, and the PS5 already adds upgrades to last gen games in general. So the only thing I can think of is that they're wanting to make sure that it works on last gen consoles first. Like mm-hmm. kind of why Cyberpunk got delayed because they because they even said, oh, we're delaying it because we have to make it work on like seven different consoles. Not, I mean, that's obviously like a exaggeration, but it, it, they're, they're trying to make it work on a lot. So I can imagine that with the with the Mass Effect remastered team, that's their main goals. They want it to work on every console first before yeah, they start think, going, okay, let's look into making this run at 60, 1080p, 4K, that kind of thing. And I think they're right to do so just because the install base for just the PS4 alone is fucking insane. And with how, and how um, supplier-strained um, next-gen consoles are, um, you know, obviously the pre-orders are already all gone and people are going to be rushing to get those consoles on launch day, uh, you, yeah, you might as well aim for the biggest fucking base, and the upgrades will come eventually. So it's at no real loss. And uh, I, just, I'm sorry, good. I also think we're failing to mention that there's no switch port. This is true. Uh, yeah, it, it would be it would be good on the switch. I'm not I'm uh, not going to deny. You know what? You can play Mass Effect 3 on the Wii U, my dude. <coughs> yeah. Don't even remind me about that. I'm still so furious about that. It's not even funny, all right? Why, why are you I, furious? For, hey, we're going to put Mass Effect 3 on Wii U the same day we're going to put the Mass Effect trilogy on all other consoles for $20 less? I don't know why I would be bitter about that. <laughs> I, I, I would have played the you. trilogy. I would have played the trilogy if that if it came out on Wii U. It has been too long since we've had you on, Mesa. I, I, I missed you, buddy. I would give you a hug right now <laughs> if I could. Your friend. God, I want to hug you, man. But uh, just going back to two of the earlier points while I was fixing uh, the spirit of Blaine, um, <laughs> I, I, I never really touched any of the DLC for any of the Mass Effect games. I think the Ooh. most I did was um, the PS3 version of Mass Effect 2 had some of the DLC included in it. But like the Citadel DLC for uh, for three was like pretty highly regarded. It was kind of like a because it was not, basically not, it, it, it was like fan the service, last right? hurrah. Oh, yeah. it, was, it, it was kind of fan service because it allowed you to romance characters that you couldn't romance in the base game. Mm-hmm. But it was also kind of like the last hurrah to that series, which Bioware weirdly put out like six months after it came out, expecting people to still be playing it by then. Which, I mean, there was still people playing it, but at the time, I had beaten it, I gotten pissed about the ending, I never touched uh, touch it again, only to find out that the Citadel DLC basically allowed me to romance the character I wanted to romance, and was a lot better. So I, I mean, never really forgave Bi- Bioware for being like, oh, here's it is, six months later. But I mean, I'll definitely play it now, because I mean, I'm, can, a, I'm a Mass Effect person. We so. can go on about the ending of Mass Effect 3 for a while, and you know what? I, there's a very special guest I want to bring on, who I've been trying to get on for a while, but you know, just scheduling conflicts. Uh, I'll just say I was disappointed, not necessarily angry, but going back to the uh, DLC part, um, I, I've had all the versions on the PC for like the longest freaking time now, and I've considered buying the DLC like so many times over the years, but I just don't want to pay, you know, 10, 15 bucks for... And I'm not trying to put it down like, oh, no, it's only like two, three hours because uh, the length of something isn't necessarily indicative of its quality. But mm-hmm. I always assumed that there would be a remaster. We'd all get bundled in. So I'm like, OK, I'll, I'll be getting a new improved version and I'll be getting the DLC thrown in also. So I, I feel very uh, vindicated that I just waited for all this. Yeah, you just got to wait until spring 2021. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm I'm happy to finally play the series. Never never you, touched oh, any. Oh, you never played it? Never Wait, touched what? any. Never. No. Oh, Mass Effect's so good. <laughs> so I've heard. Actually, I, don't, I actually lied. I just lied. Uh-oh. I've played oh. 40 minutes of one. Oh, but that's not really playing one. Yeah. You, so you did yourself a disservice. <laughs> I just, you know, I just, I've always had something else on the, on the, the backlog to play. Yeah, um, I will like, say that Mass Effect's a very large series that mm-hmm. you need to put legitimate time and effort yeah. into, so I can understand, like, mm-hmm. not having the time or, like, you know the backlog what? and stuff. Actually, if it was on, actually, if it was on a console, I probably would have, if I had a console to play it on, I probably would have played it by now. It's weird, uh, playing it, it on if, PC for some it, reason. It does not feel right. It's, yeah. it's, um... It, it's I don't even I don't necessarily want to call them ports, but it, it just feels like a game you want to play with controller, and there's not native controller support for those on the current PC versions. There's mods or whatever, but they're not you know 100 percent accurate. There's some mm-hmm. there's there's some jank associated with it. But uh, yeah, you should absolutely jump into it, and I'm excited to see what they do with Mass Effect One. I kind of wish Mass Effect One was like a full on remake or just kind of built off the foundations of two or three, but. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, so I remember when this was getting hinted at, when it was like the worst kept secret in, in gaming, when I was speaking to an industry friend and I was like, LOL, why don't they just like put this out now? It's the worst kept secret. They could release it soon. And his legit answer was, it's because of Mass Effect 1. And I remember I was like, what about Mass Effect 1? He's like, oh, they're literally like reworking the entire combat experience to make it better to play. And I was like, oh, and that's what's taking them so long? And he was like, yes. Well, he was I'm like, gl- that's exactly what's taking them so long. I'm glad they're putting in that effort because if it was just Absolutely. like up res or like newer textures, I still probably would not play Mass Effect 1. Yeah, I and and like I spoke about earlier in Mesa, just since you've never played this, or you've played like 40 minutes of it. Um, <laughs> of the, the worst thing, Mass Effect game. The one thing I always tell people when it comes to something like Dragon Age or Mass Effect is you honestly don't need to play the first ones. I mean, I hope that changes. But it's like, in my honest opinion, you don't need to play the first ones because Dragon Age 1 is fine. Mass Effect 1 is kind of gar- garbo. Yeah. And the good news is about Mass Effect 2 is it basically you could go in and be completely fine. Same with Dragon Age 2. It's, it's still the best. And for what it's worth, 2 actually has a uh, comic at the beginning. If you if you have not played 1, it'll yeah, kind of yeah, catch like up to speed what happens. and it'll let you like make some of the bigger decisions so you can still see those ramifications. Yeah, into... like you actually make the bigger decisions in like a dialogue option. Mm-hmm. Like like a character kind of grows you and is like, oh, well, someone, something, some, something happened to someone at the end of this mission who was that person do you remember and then you can choose mm-hmm. and your character's like oh this or this and they're like okay then the character's there it's definitely one of those things where it it and what's the word it puts in the fact you never played the f- first game in kind of smartly but it's like i'm glad that people will be able to play mass effect one and at least experience mass effect one and then play through the whole trilogy Mesa, before we move on, uh, would you be annoyed if I sent you a Wii U copy of Mass Effect 3? I mean, seeing as I don't have a Wii U, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I, got, I got that cool rocket launcher or whatever the, it was. Rocket That was launcher. exclusive to the version. Yeah, the, yeah the, 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 some dumb rocket launcher. I didn't know that. Ver- yeah, it's like, it's like, a, like a, it shoots like six rockets at once or something like that. Uh, yeah, oh, you a, probably... That was probably for the like combat class. Yeah, that wasn't yeah, like the biotics or anything. Mm, that was definitely worth uh, uh, twenty extra dollars in two less games. Mesa, yes. do you do you want to talk about next generation? I mean, I'm hoping to be a part of it when it starts. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm answering as many bets as I can. Only one of us has uh, their consoles locked in, and their their name starts with and ends with Era. <laughs> I'm out here. Uh, sl- Mason and I are going to be speaking about that next week on the show. I will hopefully have a uh, have a uh, uh, early impressions of Godfall for PlayStation Five. So look out for that. I guess. Hey. Uh, Mason, Mason and I will will be desperately trying to grab some uh, next gen consoles. Hopefully, if uh, UPS. Mm smiles upon me and delivers <laughs> it on time the, the ups gods 
Please. Let's go ahead and jump into some uh, PlayStation <laughs> tech news. I, I was not aware of this, and apparently they had announced it. I guess maybe I just assumed. Uh, the PS5 SSD is not a terabyte. It's 825 gigabytes mm-hmm. with the OS... Uh, with after the OS, this basically leaves you with 667 gigabytes of free space, which uh, with previously highlighted uh, concerns with, you know, games getting like stupid, crazy high um, file sizes. Call of even, Duty. Like, yeah, <laughs> Call of Duty is like how much? 265 well, gigabytes? Something like what that? What you need to remember is that's only if you download Warzone. If you don't download Warzone, you're fine. If you don't yeah, download the most true. popular version of the game, you're fine. <laughs> you're, okay, <laughs> don't download Warzone. Modern, Modern Warfare has a really good campaign. It does. Don't download Warzone. It, 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 it is worth noting that uh, the competition, the uh, Xbox Series X, does have a terabyte of uh, storage. And as well, it already has... Uh, official expansions, another terabyte, which you can get at an admittedly high price of like 200 bucks. But Mm -hmm. uh, there's currently no supported uh, external SSDs that you can plug into the PS5. Yeah. Um, uh, Hope, but according to this article, uh, apparently this is being offset by the PS5's hardware, allowing for faster download speeds, uh, with the example given by this GameStop write-up saying that Fist of the North Star, an anime I have not watched, I assume Mesa has... I've not watched it, but I am familiar with Kinshiro's um, uh, post-apocalyptic adventures. Is Fist of the North Star the uh, Omaiwa Shinderu, or is that something yes. else? Yes, yes okay. it is. It's also the inspiration for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That that That's all I know it for, though. <laughs> but, uh, so they used uh, Fist of the North Star, which they called a uh, medium-range file size game. It's at, it sits at 37 gigabytes. It can be downloaded in seven minutes on the PS5 compared to an hour on the PS4. So I don't I don't know the exact tech mag- wiz- wizardry behind it, but That's yeah, it allows for faster yeah. downloads. Uh, the PS4's download. Like, I, re- I remember they made such a big deal about having it se- a separate processor specifically for downloads when the PS4 was coming out. T- to be fair, anything that was better than the PS3 download speed was a fucking godsend. <laughs> see, see, they say that when I tried to play Rainbow Six Siege on Thursday night, and I couldn't because the download is, <laughs> the download time for the updates were five hours. Yeah, I mean, I, and have, I was like, ouch. <laughs> I have pretty crazy high uh, internet speeds. Like on Steam, I can download something like no mm-hmm. problem within thirty minutes. My PS4 is just like. Yeah, I got I got to give that a day. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, are you ready to sit around for five hours? And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, not really. And some also uh, comparison news, and uh, it's, it's also specifically because of this, I am now very enthusiastic about uh, trying to grab an Xbox Series load X. Load times, load times, load times. Oh, the load time comparisons on, on that have been flooding youtube now have been amazing oh my god yeah, we, we, we can touch on that a bit now but in, in terms for the ps5 um one of the bigger features is that uh the ps5 will have the same uh suspend mode that the ps4 has you can currently suspend one game and then uh, resume from where you left off as what well, as long as it's not a uh, online dependent game, you know, like let's say Fortnite, you can't mm-hmm. suspend it and pop back in. Uh, at, but this is also compared to the Xbox Series X, and I believe the S can do this as well. Uh, quick resume, which lets you go up to, I think people said five, maybe even as as much as up to seven, depending on what games you're doing. Holy crap! And mm-hmm. so, so just that alone. Because I, I jump between games like There's No Tomorrow. Someone wants to hit me up to play a multiplayer. I'm just like, well, sorry, I'm in the middle of a Red Dead mission. I can't. You got to hit me up in like 40 minutes. <laughs> um, So that that's something that I'm just like, damn, the, the Xbox is really seeming, uh, alongside the, the superior load times, is seeming uh, to be more of the go-to console for me, at least in terms for like multi-platform. Um, while the PS5 will, will definitely still be there for exclusives and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, and Sarah, you're obviously getting both, although I believe you're not getting your Xbox until Christmas, right? So I'm going to uh, talk about my family because my Xbox is actually a gift. It's a gift for my parents. And they're like, oh, I can't play it until Christmas, but I'm just going to be like, can I just play it? Because my friend and I were going to move our Gears 4 game onto the Series X. 
<laughs> can I just like play it so I can play Gears with someone? I mean, they'll probably say <laughs> yes. But the thing is, I don't play like multiple games at once. Like I'll just, I because I don't have the attention span for that. So I don't see myself using that feature super intensely because I normally save when I'm done with something then turn to something else. So I don't see myself really using that. And I think honestly, like quick resuming between five or six games is honestly a little bit too much. For reference, how many tabs do you leave open on Chrome at any given time? Three to four. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I oh, got like 20 is that any per time. window? Uh, no, it's one window. <laughs> I don't even know how many. I think I have like 30 open at this point. I, I think I lowered m- some of mine specifically just for the stream, but yeah, usually it's like, uh, around like 30 or so. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I don't see myself using that quick resume feature. I'm more impressed by the loading times, especially watching, uh, I believe it was IGN who compared death uh, Death Stranding's opening loading between mm. PS4 and PS5, and for PS5, it took only a minute thirty. When I remember it taking like five, four or five minutes. Yeah, just so to it's go- like for me, I'm- like yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to go over some of the loading times that I've noted down here uh, for Avenger, and this is going to be, I uh, will do a PS5 compared to Series X for this. Um, Avengers on PS5 takes a minute and a half to uh, boot up while the Series X takes a minute. So 30 second difference. And then um, just for the uh, Xbox Series X compared to the um, Xbox One X, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is uh, 38 seconds as compared to two minutes and eight seconds on Mm -hmm. the Xbox One X. Uh, Control is 10 seconds versus 58. Which is fucking nuts. Because control fans. has long as hell. I'm sorry, but control has long as fuck loading time. Especially if you keep dying and you have yeah, to keep doing that. So screwed. You got to sit there for like two minutes. Let's see. Final Fantasy oh, 15 nuts. is uh, 13 seconds versus a minute and 11. Outer Worlds, a game that is filled to the brim with fucking loading, <laughs> is uh, 11 seconds versus 43. And uh, Fallout 4, another open world game, is uh, 10 we- seconds versus a minute. I wouldn't be surprised if they're able to retool uh, out of world so that it has like almost no loading screens. I, I mean, for games that just have like such frequent lo- loading times, like in between yeah. levels or whatever, this is going to be such a fucking godsend. Whoa. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if people remember when they showed the first Demons. I, I always pronounce it like Demons because it's got the like yeah, yeah, Demons, yes, yes. Demon yes. Souls yeah. uh, gameplay when they use the bonfire and instantly was teleported to the next mm-hmm. area. Like that shit blew my mind, and when they said like that was like live game gameplay, like I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like there's no time. Like you're instantly mm-hmm. there. Yeah. I think someone was testing um, The Witcher Three on the Series X, and it was just instant. Like there was no like cut to black or anything. It's just like boop, now you're here. There was just... like weird world and texture poppins. Yeah, so. there was that. Like, it was like really you... freaky. Like the world just didn't exist for like half a second. I, I, I would hope a patch would fix that. Did you see the test for uh, GTA Five? I did not no. actually. <laughs> it's like 15 seconds. Oh my god! Damn. <laughs> it's a, it's a, we're. I'm very excited to enter this 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 new world. So, so Mesa, new but, world without but, loading screens. Yeah. So before the show, I believe um, Sarah, Sarah was asking me if I had managed to get a pre-order for the Xbox, and I'm like, no. And and then you said, but he has it pre-ordered in his soul because <laughs> previously I I'd, I'd been on the record saying like I have a PC, I'm going to skip the Xbox, but the uh, quick resume and load times mm-hmm. are really winning me over. So I'm like, fuck, I'm I'm probably going to fucking grab one now. Yeah. Um, Where do you lean on all this? Uh, I just still wait on an Xbox. Uh, though I do want the quick resume features to come because, like, I think that would be amazing to be like, you know, if I have a fighting game, I can just pause it in the training room and just return to the training room instantly. That that's pretty good. Nice. Um, but um, but yeah. Um, I'm I'm just happy. I'm just happy that everyone's shifting together into the, the into the, the, the you know into the world of paradigm. SSDs. Yeah, this We're going paradigm. into the future. I mean, it's still kind of. Cr- I I mean, uh, Microsoft would have to support this at a OS level for uh, mm-hmm. Windows, but yeah, you, you still can't suspend a game on a PC. 
let alone yeah. freaking multi. Um, I wonder because um, with AMD's new processor and graphics cards, they offered they announced a feature that will make it will make um of their processor and graphics cards together work kind of similar to how a console would work. Mm. So I'm kind of curious if maybe because of that pairing, we could see a lot more. Um, console-like features on desktop in the future. Correct me if I'm wrong. I was listening to... I don't remember which podcast because I literally listened through like five of them at work. Hmm. But um, there, there's talks of um, NVIDIA possibly opening... S- uh, maybe slots is the wrong word. You can correct me. You're the more knowledgeable. Uh, basically, of putting SSDs onto uh, GPUs. Have you heard yeah. anything about that? Yes, yeah, yeah. NVIDIA definitely did talk about that type of thing in their last press conference. And, you know, something like that wouldn't be hard for AMD to also reciprocate. Um, yeah, yeah, just like base- super fast storage. That that would be not the not the video RAM, but, you know, separate super fast storage for uh, those graphics cards, yeah. Okay, so that could probably even the playing field because it seems like right now when uh, when the uh, current generation of consoles came out back in 2013 they were basically at the mid-range if if not maybe a little bit below for what pcs yeah. were at the time but but this time around it's like you're getting a hell of a fucking uh, powerhouse for these prices yeah yeah, yeah easily like an eight or nine hundred dollar system mm-hmm. for those prices Plus, you're getting like actually optimized games. Yeah, they'll that, actually run. Is... You won't have to worry about like fucking yeah. Assassin's Creed fucking bugging out on you or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, but I mean, like, you know, like, even if this, even if my desktop was the exact same spec as like PS5, and I was playing like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to run better on the PS4, PS5 just because you know that I've optimized. actually been able to optimize the game for that system. Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, speaking of loading times, uh, the PS4 has recently actually seen a bit of improvement o- across some of its exclusives thanks to new patches from uh, Oodle Kraken, a compression software solution by tech company Rad Game Tools that's been licensed by Sony in order to drastically reduce the overall file size of games and improving mm-hmm. load times su- while simultaneously uh, sustaining their original quality. So some of the games listed here include The Last of Us Remastered now only takes 14 seconds for its initial boot versus its previous minute and 30 seconds. And that's without, you know, the PS5's advantage of an SSD. So you can expect that to work even uh, greater wonders over there. And so basically what this technology is doing, it's basically just uh, texture compression. I I don't know the exact uh, wizardry behind it, but... They managed to do it through a patch, and it's able to bring an un- an, an uncompressed game for, that's at sitting at 80 gigabytes down to 40 gigabytes on an SSD. So while we're seeing this kind of already work wonders on current games on PS4, it's going to be continue to be adapted onto the PS5. And that's actually pretty freaking exciting, and it's pretty actually pretty fucking important to have game sizes continue uh, to be lowered, especially with uh, the previously mentioned 600... What was the size? 667 gigabytes of free space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So compression technologies that retain quality are going to be in of dire need. I mean, I just wish other games other than, like, Sony exclusives use this, because playing Watch Dogs Legion right now... When I like, sometimes when I go into another area that requires a loading screen, it could take anywhere up from like five to 10 seconds to for like a minute. And it's just like, I feel like we've reached this point where like loading should not take like a minute or like a minute 30. Mm-hmm. So kind of just like, why is it stuff other than Sony doing this? Or why isn't other studios looking into doing this? But at the same time, I'm glad that Sony's pushing the un- initiative to do it. So that PS4 games now will load at a faster rate and people don't have to sit there for like two minutes, three minutes, depending on how long something takes to load. Mm. Do you know anything specific about this whatsoever, Mesa? Does this come, come into your wheelhouse? I mean, if it's just a new compression technology, that's, you know, that's, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. It's I, pretty much what it's pretty much yeah. what it is at face value, then, right? There's- yeah, I'm not too. I'm not too big in software. I just know it's a little bit about hardware. 
Um, you know, like one of the reasons why the PS5 and Xbox Series X is doing so much, especially doing so much better with older games. Um, especially if you were to like put an SSD in like a PS4, the reason why that doesn't dramatically increase your load times is because you know the CPUs of those consoles are actually very weak, and the um, OS isn't necessarily built to take advantage of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, those 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 CPUs are like really, really, really low. Um, but with the new generation, very fast. So um, right. And uh, I just want to really say, uh, I really hate to bring your guys' conversation, but uh, I don't know if this is breaking. Scrolling through Twitter, Uh-oh. Xbox support posted a couple hours ago. The team is aware some fans are starting to receive their Xbox consoles uh-uh, ahead of launch. For those who receive them early, you are welcome to fire it up and start gaming. F- FYI, we are still making final touches for launch, so please expect multiple platform and game updates. Oh, wow, so, that's cool. Some people are receiving their Xbox consoles early. Uh, if if someone watching does, don't be alarmed. You can easily mm. sp- boot it up. You can start playing it. X- Xbox isn't gonna like break down your door SWAT style and like rip it out of your wall and take it away. <laughs> like you can use it, but I I can't believe we're getting to the point where uh, people are getting consoles in their hands already. Yeah. People who are not like journalism people (laughs) are legitimately getting them. But also kudos to Microsoft for just being super cool and being like, hey, just being how we're not mad that you're getting them early. You can start playing them now. We don't care. So, I mean, hey, good on them for being like, go ahead. Just and plus good on them for for also saying, hey, just a heads up. There might be some like weird stuff on the console because we haven't done pre-launch updates. So. Good on them for the for the transparency and for just being, hey, you guys can use them, just know going in. It might be a little bit funky, but you can go right ahead. So just wanted to throw that in there because I just saw that. Thank you for the breaking news. Report, I mean, Sarah. I kind of breaking from like three hours ago, but I didn't see it until now. Relatively breaking. So. And uh, just, just one continue. last. Oh, yeah. Just one last note on the Oodle Texture. Uh, technologies is I wish that this had come uh, before the Bandai Namco patent ex- uh, expired. And and for those that don't know, Bandai Namco had a patent on loading screen mini games. So I like one that's that comes to mind is fucking what is it? Drag all the Dragon Ball Z uh, Budokai games would have like mm-hmm. dumb little mini games you can do like on the loading to like grow Cybermen or or yeah. what was it to make uh, Go Tanks do the little uh, ghost attack. Mm-hmm. You can tell how fucking out of date I am with Dragon Ball. Well, you're but, right. Uh, the Super Ghost Kamikaze attack. But yeah, so yeah, now everyone can make uh, loading screen mini games. But uh, now that loading <laughs> screens are <laughs> loading going away, it's like, damn, we could have we could have used that patent a while ago, or, or had it expired a while ago. <laughs> so that sucks. Uh, Mesa, do you want to go over the Oculus Facebook bullshit story, as I have so aptly titled it in our document? <laughs> you're you're more in a VR than either of us, so I figure. So 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 the reason that um, a lot of people are actually leaving Oculus, I mean, I mean, obviously users, I mean, um, a lot of you, a lot of users are leaving Oculus and all this stuff is because um, Oculus is starting to require you to sign into your Facebook account to use the device. Um, which has caused a lot of problems, you know, for a lot of people, they don't have a Facebook account. They don't want a Facebook account. They want to tie their Facebook account to this. And those people who try to find workarounds or, you know, may have had trouble on their Facebook accounts in the past, um, are all of a sudden out of luck. There's been reports of people who may have had a banned Facebook account all of a sudden now being locked uh, away from the games that they've purchased on the Oculus store. Because of because of this merger, um, because also, those are because you, those are linked. If, if you delete your face Facebook account, you delete mm-hmm. every game that you bought on the Oculus Store. Exactly. You can't get them back, which is mm-hmm. scummy as hell. Exactly, it, they're, they're fucking locking you in so they can mm-hmm. like even if you stop posting, they still have your digital footprint there, and that's uh, mm-hmm. you usually I'm um, one of. The, I'm one of the people that kind of leans on like, okay, well, you sign a contract, you can look up the terms of service, you can cancel. But this is br- like very explicitly broaching into uh, 
them strong arming you to to basically blackmail and you just like yeah. hey you need to keep this facebook so we can exploit you otherwise we're gonna delete all your games and that's yeah, just it, fucked up it is it's it's a real shame um bec- especially because oculus is the is you know is pushing vr so far like the oculus quest 2 is the best headset from uh, at least to me in terms of like price performance what you can do with it I don't see any other reason to get any other headset. Absolutely. But, but now they put this big Facebook wall, and now I'm looking somewhere else. I mean, it's for people, shame. and it sucks because for the people that already linked it before, they they're fucking out of luck. They can't do shit. I I mean, the only saving grace for this, I guess, is um, if you already know this information. You can just make like a dummy Facebook account and then do it that way, but there's so many people that are already fucked that it's, it's just, just fucked up. You, are, I think you can do that. I believe that might actually be against the terms of service. So if well, you, can, you can't just out, make you can't just make a dummy account. No, I believe that is against the terms of service, and if that gets found out and your account gets banned, there you go. Wait, so so let me get this straight. They won't. Like, let's say you don't have a Facebook yet, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You, you can't just make a dummy account that says uh, M- Mesa's dummy account. They won't let you use that to, to, or they'll let you use it to purchase games, but then they'll also delete I'm, your account for okay. being a I'm, dummy account? I'm pretty sure. I mean, like, that type of Facebook account, I'm pretty sure, is against the terms of service. What the fuck? Yeah, because I believe there have been there's been um, stories in the past of people making you know uh, uh, dummy Facebook accounts and those getting banned. Wow! So that, what are they going to do? Be like, hey, you have to post what you like. We need to get those freaking ad sales. Come on, man! Hmm. Like you can make a you can make a Facebook account and just keep it dormant. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, but like if you make like a like a, like a side account, that I believe that is against the rules. Okay. Which wow, is that, stupid that's, and bad. That, that's a bit scummier than I originally <laughs> thought. <laughs> Damn. That sucks. Yeah. All right. We've been delaying this story for a little bit, and I don't think Mesa was, was here for it. Uh, because there's, cause, uh, we, we can't beat it. Uh, Sarah, do you want to talk about Steve's meat? Yeah. Come on. Come don't on. You wanna... This is... Uh, I mean, John. Fine. John? John summarized it pretty well. You can't Fine. you can't beat Steve's meat. So, just for heads up, I'm not a Smash player, so I don't like exactly know everything. But from what I remember seeing seeing on Twitter, uh, when Steve from Minecraft got added into Smash, do not talk to me about that. I feel like Travis Touchdown deserved his spot so much more, but that is not the point. Um, his winning as long screen. Hatsune you know. yeah. Miku made Minecraft. <laughs> Yes, uh, well, his winning screen had him, what, like, chewing on a piece of, like, Minecraft steak? And then when he turned around to the camera, the steak was, like, literally right at his crotch. So it looked like he was holding his meat. (laughs) (laughs) And, of course, the internet had to speak up about it and freak out about it, and so Nintendo went and took it out. (laughs) He's like... So y'all did this to yourselves. (laughs) I think it says a lot that 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 just didn't pass through anyone's head over at um over at the development mm. studio like are they just so wholesome they just didn't see that that, that was a potential issue or do you think it was like <laughs> no one will notice that it's funny <laughs> it to me it was just so like you it was again the internet speaking up about a funny thing and nintendo going oh no no we can't have that in our family for the game and then taking it out I feel like if no one had said anything and just kept it to like Discord groups and laughing about it in Discord groups, Steve's meat would have stayed in Minecraft because y'all had to go out and start posting stuff on Twitter about it. And I think Steve's meat was trending at one point. This is why we can't have nice things. Rip, uh, rip Steve's meat. Mm-hmm. It. Oh god, just uh, Smash is fucking weird, man. The meat's mm. been beat. <laughs> Um, I think the most interesting thing for me about the PS5, um, just listening to all the coverage that came out this week and also a little bit last week, um, the biggest point that people seem to be the most ecstatic about is actually the controller, specifically the haptic feedback. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's not the DualShock 5, it's the DualSense. Um, so, so basically what's happening here is that it, it has a very... Is it, 
is a right to call it proprietary, but basically the rumble and trigger feedback, as according to industry veterans, saying that it feels more next gen than any kind of graphical improvements that we've seen. And so one of the tie, uh, the tie-in game with um, the PS5 Astro's Playroom, a short little uh, three, four hour game that's just kind of there to show off the features of the controller, as well as some of the PS5's other uh, capabilities. Um, it, it's basically been described that it never, that the dual sense never stops rumbling while you're playing the entire game. And it can be like super tiny little amounts up to like gigantic amounts of like shaking. And so mm-hmm. it kind of gives you like a little bit of diegetic feedback for interactions such as like using a slide, walking on gravel, hitting a pool of water, or like walking through a sandstorm. Like it provides uh, similar enough sensations yeah. through the rumble that it kind of makes you feel like you're there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I have yet to use it yet, but but that's been like basically the biggest talking point about the PS5. Yeah. So as, I'm as, really uh, excited. Giant, as Giant Bomb said, like, you know, HD rumble, this is ultra HD rumble. <laughs> <laughs> it's 4K rumble. But uh, yeah, I'm actually really freaking excited to use it. Um, although as, as stated, like for some of the other uh, PS5 features such as the proprietary SD technology. I I sincerely doubt that anyone or any developers are going to mm-hmm. utilize it uh, that aren't first party. Like the, uh, the third party. Will. Oh, it, I swear to God, if this is not added into Death Stranding as like an update, oh, geez, I'm going to be disappointed because this seems like it was mm-hmm. made for that. Like imagine going through the snow or like going across the rocks and the controller like constantly. Like, either it's the backpack, like, going up and down on his back, or if it's his shoes under the rocks and stuff, like, come on. It was legitimately made for that game. Yeah. Like, please. Or whatever horror game Kojima's working on next. Like, oh my god, can you imagine? Yeah, I I know for for a damn fact, if, uh, even if any do, if any third-party companies do uh, wind up supporting this, even if it's not to, like, the full capacity that first parties are doing... Um, I'll definitely be getting the games on PS5 versus the Xbox just because I, I, I want to test this feature. I want to see what it can do. Like like when they mm-hmm. first introduced it, it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's a little bit more feedback. And I think even the Xbox One controllers Xbox, have, have, Xbox, have... Xbox One has rumble triggers. Yes, but... Which it, only first-party games use. Right. It does feel, feel good that? in Halo. Yeah. yeah. And in Forza and stuff. And so this is kind of just like the next... Um, the next evolution in that, yeah. so that'll, they, that'll be exciting. If they can beat, um, if they can beat how the Kirby game uses um, HD Rumble, then they're, they're doing pretty well. Because um, um, if you beat, uh, I think it's the last, the, the last like challenge mission in the Switch Kirby game, the HD Rumble basically chimes out the Kirby theme. <laughs> it turns out green greens. That you is know, I- adorable. <laughs> I totally forgot the the switch has uh, HD Rumble. Like that's not even yeah. on the uh, triggers. That that's kind of like just on the Joy Cons. Right? Yeah, did only you play, a few um, games use it. It's really yeah. not like a did big. Did you play? Thing. Um, did you play uh, f- uh, fifty one games? Like the the board game that came I out have this not. year. Nope. It's a lot of fun. All like almost all the dice games use uses it, and it feels fantastic. Okay, I might have to check it out for that then. Honestly, if you want a good recommendation for the HD Rumble One Two Switch, yeah, I never played that either. The launch title—that's the best way to experience the HD Rumble because literally no other game. I think I think Doom used it a tiny bit Mm. with the like uh, with the with the with the like feedback from the weapons. I think Mm. someone could correct me, but I believe it did. Mario Odyssey used it subtly. Yeah. Um, I, I know Breath of the Wild does not use it whatsoever. Yeah, that that that's where I've sunk the most hours into my Switch. So if mm-hmm. it, yeah, but uh, once you Switch is basically it, it wasn't a tie-in. You had to pay for it separately, but it basically exists as a bit of a tech demo for uh, yeah. yeah for the Switch, kind of like Wii Sports was for yeah, the Yeah, but if you want to have fun, you should play Fifty One Game. <laughs> I have I, I I have an entire stream on my channel playing one two switch the friend and it's so when are you gonna one v one me in Wii Sports tennis? Ooh, Wii Sports tennis, try me in fucking bowling, bro. Oh yes, <laughs> same. You're not the only one. Let's go. 
It's gonna Mesa. Be, uh, that's been a minute. I should not. What? What's up? What's are, are you looking forward to playing Cyberpunk this month? Oh no! Um, Don't yeah, yes, me. yes, I am. I <laughs> I, well, I pre-ordered everything. Well, I have news for you. Too fucking oh, bad. Oh. <laughs> Cyberpunk, the highly anticipated and recently embroiled in both crunch and transphobic controversy, has announced yet again another delay. Uh, this most which, recent which we moment. talked about earlier, which it's because screams, QA stuff. It looks, yeah. yeah, it screams uh, um, compliance. Yeah, so it's it's been set back by three weeks, which is so the current release date, which. I would not be surprised if it gets pushed back yet, yet again, is uh, currently December 10th. And this kind of falls on the heels of um, them announcing that the title had gone gold, meaning that the title had successfully passed certification through both uh, Microsoft and Sony. But as uh, Sarah and Mesa have brought up, uh, the, the core of the issue seems to be they, they're having a lot of issues bringing it up to snuff on, on current-gen consoles, specifically the launch Xbox and uh, PS4. That just goes mm-hmm. to show how good the launch consoles are anymore. It needs to so power the Connect. If you plug in the Connect, it'll, wor- it'll run fine. Mm. Run the game by Connect. Uh, Keanu Reeves speaks to you via the Connect. <laughs> but uh, even aside it's a secret, from the- you have to plug in the, the Connect, and, there's, and he doesn't say that. You plug it in, he'll speak to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, e- even aside from. Um, the issues that they're having with, the, with those specific with Keanu consoles. Reeves by putting in the HDMI <laughs> in on your Xbox. D- that's dude. That's like that's like a dream though. <laughs> Just to watch TV with Keanu. I was so happy when I saw that Keanu Reeves fucking coloring book. I'm like, oh damn, this is cool. They got Jason Momoa. They got Idris Elba. Oh. And then, uh, and then one of us Keanu already Reeves. had one. <laughs> Someone already had one and colored it in. I won't name who. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I just love Keanu, man. He is he is the definition of a, a good, good boy, a good bean. Yeah, so I mean, Keanu Reeves, big chunk is four twenty one hundred. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just just the constant delays with Cyberpunk. Like I, I think someone put together a little graphics. It's been delayed what four or five times, and mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's just indicative of like extremely poor production management and at a at an at a higher level. Yeah. And it and it just that just constantly results in both you know fans being disappointed as well as um, the development team just co- just consistently having to go into crunch just time and time again because usually I'm on the forefront of the of the side of uh, it's fine to delay a game I I'd rather want a higher quality product than a buggy one but the side effect of that isn't like oh yeah now the devs can relax and take their time with the product it it results in usually the opposite where they go into full on crunch mode. I was about to um, say it was uh uh was it Shigure Miyamoto who said mm-hmm. that 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 meme quote where it's like a bad game is bad forever but a delayed game what was the end part of it it was something online so like a delayed it, game is I, um, I can't remember the rest a, it's of a, it. it's, um, it's I know the quote like, you're talking about um um uh, a delayed game could eventually get a bad game is bad forever so yeah. Exactly. And but but to Nintendo's credit, they actually have good um, working conditions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they they, they don't like crunch. When, when you were talking about delaying, that was what came to mind. Mm-hmm. Was you know that what? was that quote? Kudos to Nintendo for being pro labor. Yeah, they yeah, but all <laughs> yeah, accounts, their games take forever. <laughs> oh well, fuck accounts, it. They 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 treat all their employees very well. If you've seen like some of their like. Um, uh, like they're like the employee like uh, 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 like uh, information that they're able to receive, especially in like um, in Americas, it's very pro LGBT, pro mm-hmm. pro everything. They they donate tons of money to like local pride stuff without saying a word. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! The only thing I would say about Nintendo uh, working and announcing stuff is I feel like they announce shit too early. Especially because they announced, you know, the Breath of the Wild sequel, and then it went silent. <laughs> well, okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, but there, there, there are rumors for why, but, um, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of of the mind, like, it's fine to announce it. I, I'll probably for, not forget that, that it exists, but I won't wind up getting excited until it actually has a release date. Mm-hmm. So, no, no, it, it doesn't I, bother me too I much. I feel that. I just always yeah. think, like, like, when they announced the Switch, there's a bunch of Switch games 
that they announced on like the day that they announced the switch like no more heroes like 2.5 they're like hey we're, we're doing this and then that spongebob like five years later <laughs> it's just like, here it is. i mean like, i mean let's talk about smt5 like uh let's also talk about bayonetta 3 <laughs> hey, that one yeah it's yeah i mean i'm not like i'm definitely not defending cd project but i think the act of revealing something too well, early or revealing yeah. something really early definitely needs to stop well, well, for and me, i the- talk shit about bethesda all the time but at least they give like solid release dates when they announce stuff i mean let's not oh yeah cyberpunk's like, a bad like bad version to talk about it was announced in what 2010 2011 Te- I technically so. that far back yeah, yeah. But, like, my core of the issue is that, like, you can announce that it exists and that you're working on it, like, years ahead of time. Like, that doesn't bother me. It's specifically putting a launch date that you know for a damn fact you can't fucking meet. Like, mm-hmm. well, like plan. They couldn't meet it. Like, yeah. I mean, but for, for production mm-hmm. tables, you always have to plan for, for hurdles, whether it's film production, yeah. whether it's especially mm-hmm. game production where a million things could go wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, if, like if, if, if you think, like, hey, I can get this done in a year. Uh, you might as well add another eight months because there's going to be some shit that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, Again, I'm not I'm not defending of... anything here, but no one saw a pandemic coming. <laughs> no one had in yeah. their like delay boards. What yeah, but pandemic but happened. even then, it was supposed to come out before the pandemic. Uh, so, it was supposed to come out in April. Yeah, like, that's not before the pandemic. But wasn't it supposed to come out even before then last year? No, no. It got okay. its first date of April. Okay, well, you know that what? That was that, the that's, first that, date that was given to it. Well, you know what? That's fair then that it came out in mm-hmm. April, but there's also been a slew of other games that have yeah. come out after that. Um, so so if they even if they were sticking to that original April timeline, it still would have been more than feasible. Well, it's yeah. also not about that. It's about moving to the work from home model. Yeah. Some some companies did it super easy. Blizzard did it easier than like most companies did as an example. Mm-hmm. But it's like some some companies like a lot of Japanese companies, they never had to do this. So for them, mm-hmm. it took a while to yeah, for fully a lot of them, get the groove of like working from home. And for a lot of those employees, they don't have the space at mm-hmm. home to work at home. Right. So um, like, so like a lot of stuff. Like, yeah, wow, Shadowlands got delayed because of working from home. But all in all, a company like Blizzard, they were able to start working from home a lot faster than most co- developers were. I think. I think Bungie was the same thing. Like there were some studios who were able to do it within either a couple of weeks or like a month, but there were some studios where it took longer. And again, mm-hmm. I'm not defending any any no. anybody because that's my last I, the thing I would ever want to do. But I think there was a lot of factors mm-hmm. here that yeah. could make sense why they couldn't make that April date. Because I, again, no one yeah. saw a pandemic, and the working from home thing mm-hmm. is is a lot harder. Also, I, there's, I've also seen some speculation that maybe Stadia. Um, for for this for this God for this delay it, <laughs> of like of like, hey, Stadia is actually harder to deal with than we thought, and, and, we're, and we're good everywhere else. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's always Google's fault. It's always Google's fault. I, I I think what both of you said is like incredibly a hundred percent valid, mm-hmm. but I, but but specifically with Cyberpunk, so wait, I don't I don't so want to give them. It's always Google's fault. Is that 100% <laughs> oh absolutely? I'm fine with that. I'm one hundred. Yes. Hey hey. Can <laughs> I, no, never mind. Let's, but yeah, let's just keep I, going. Let's just keep I, going. I don't talk about Google Play Music. We can just keep going. <laughs> I, I don't want to give uh, Cyberpunk too much of a leeway because, uh, as reported, they've been crunching for for years at this point. Absolutely, it's not, it's not, yeah. it's not just oh, like yeah. a recent thing. So absolutely. it's, it, it, it's no, absolutely right. uh, poor production management. But uh, I, yeah, yes, COVID I was has just absolutely. Commenting on the fact, like when just you works. give dates after, like dates before a pandemic, you really don't have like. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think whole, this- like can they make that date yes or no pandemic gets thrown it into the mix oh fuck like it's I think the studio that actually got off the best with the uh with the whole pandemic thing I think was probably Doom Eternal that came out like a week or two after the yep. uh, lockdown started Yeah so, so they, well, they must have been said, like wiping their brows the like oh damn brawls of that and then also companies like Bungie and Blizzard who instantly went to a work from home model even before all this stuff happened and they seemed to get it done pretty quickly like they were on top of it like I think I, I know Blizzard sent home like equipment with their faculty as soon as this whole thing happened like they sold like they, like, they literally like filled people's cars with like the equipment and like let them go home so it's oh, like yeah. I feel like there were some companies who like like you said Doom Animal Crossing coming out 
Like, I feel like there were some companies who were easy to get this yeah. into, and then others who were like, oh, shit, what yeah. do we do? We've we've never had to do this. Based on all reports, Nintendo got hit hard mm-hmm. by the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember um, reading that, too. Yeah, Pikmin 3 was supposed to come out in, like, June <laughs> or Ooh. something like that, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a big oof. Yeah. Um, going back to the cyberpunk th- thing, and then we can we can move on from that. Um, in an investor meeting following the preceding announcement of the delay, uh, CD Project try uh, try to pronounce that name. <laughs> Go ahead. Co- uh, I will try. Uh, Co CEO CD Project Red Adam Kaczynski. I think Kaczynski. Kis- Kis- like I Kis- don't. Kis- I'm Polish and I don't fucking know. The fuck. Because because it, it is K I C I N S K. Sir, if you are somehow watching Kisun. this, we are so sorry. We're sure that you're like a nice be, person. Be, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, we, we can judge his his morality based off the story. Well, yeah, uh, but like I, I as I feel bad, Kikinsi? like mispronouncing people's Kikinsi? names. So I'm sorry, dude, if you're somehow listening. Co CEO of CD Project Red, Adam. Just, just say Adam. <laughs> just Adam. Co CEO of <laughs> CD Project Adam. Red, Adam, stated that work conditions and crunch at the studio were quote not that bad and never <laughs> worse. <laughs> S- some people have been crunching heavily, but a large part of the team isn't crunching at all. It's mostly about QA and engineers and programmers. That's a lot of and- people, though. Yeah. It is a lot of fucking people. And, yeah. uh, and-, and following this investor call. Adam sent a company-wide email apologizing for these comments, saying, I had not wanted to comment on Crunch, yet I still did, and I did it in a demeaning and harmful way. What I said was not even unfortunate, it was utterly bad. I mean, I mean, at least he learned from his mistake. I mean, yeah, but it's like, it still shouldn't have happened the first way. It's like, if you're making, if you're having people crunch, Mm. it's like, maybe don't put salt in the wound. It's Don't say it's bad to worse. Like, oh, God. Like that bad just, Adam. Ooh, that <laughs> bad Adam, we can't pronounce your last name, and we're sorry about that. I, I sincerely apologize for that part, Adam. <laughs> People are going to be so fucking confused. It's going to be like, wait, what Adam? But no, it's because it's like I've, again, you guys have dealt with crunch more than I have. I've never, unless you count like Jose, unless you count our college days from like a shit finals two in like a day. The, you count, know like, what? I work on this. When I transferred over to San Francisco from uh, from Maloney College, I actually got into a really good groove of like if I got a paper assigned to me that that was due in a month, I would do it the day it got assigned. I'd, I'd get I would get that shit out of the way so quick. At Maloney, I was bad. I would do it like literally the morning of. Yeah, I was never like that. But I, I, I mean, especially finals, working on like three twenty five plus scripts at a time, it was definitely crunch feeling, and I never want to do that again. But it's like at the same time, I I I'm with you. I don't believe crunch should exist in the industry at all. With the whole mental and physical like mess ups it can do to people, the fact that studios are talking about it in such a way where it's like, oh, not everybody's doing it, as then they name half mm-hmm. of their studio. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's it's not good, and it can really mentally fuck up people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I'm sure you guys remember hearing about like. Uh, people from Rockstar crunching on Red Dead and people from Naughty Dog crunching on The Last of Us. Like, it can fuck people up. And I definitely think that crunch is something that should not exist in the in the industry. And we talked about this before. It's like, oh, you can enjoy a studio's games, but also be able to criticize them. And I think this is a great example of it. Because I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm excited for Cyberpunk, but at the same time, I will throw shade and shit towards CD Projekt as they continue to crunch their staff and continue to force work, make them work like 60 plus hours a week. Like what the fuck to, to build off that. Um, let, let's, let's use like the, the last of us choose an example. I would get rid of so much of that polish and like attention to like details that most people don't even notice. I would do away with that. If it meant people got actual decent working hours and they didn't have to deal with crunch. Like you look at a a game series, like uh, Yakuza where like basically any character that isn't central to the plot basically has a potato PS3 looking face. And uh, if that's, if that's what we have to deal with in order to, to get proper working conditions, I'm fine. I'll, I'll deal with the potato faces. 
Mesa probably knows what I'm talking about. You'll just like yeah. run into a random NPC. They just like it, it's not like polygonal, but you know. Hmm. <laughs> well, you got you got you got um low LOD Mario running around. <laughs> oh, That's still in the Switch port too. I, I love low LOD Mario. You love him. It's Absolutely. but it's but it's get- definitely. I think this whole cult, this crunch culture thing, has also brought to light just how culty some people can be around studios. Absolutely. Where they seem to, again, not not like, again, you can like something, but also criticize it. But there are people who will like paint a studio as if they can do no, no wrong. Like, Oh, they're, they're, they're crunching. Yeah. It sucks, but you can't overwork people in Poland or like something along. Isn't it like they're getting like, overtime think, pay or something i think i think in poland technically under the law your uh employees are not allowed to work more than 48 hours but obviously that's not been the case i swear it was something and like i said someone correct me i swear it was something along the lines of if you work overtime you have to get paid a certain amount if right. i remember again someone correct me i may be polish but not about polish laws <laughs> um uh, they do I get paid for overtime he, there yeah i swear like that was what that was how people were like defending them was saying like, Oh yeah, it sucks. They're working overtime, but they're actually getting paid for working overtime. And yeah, getting extra pay is good. I'm, I'm sure all three of us can say getting extra pay is good. Yeah, but at the def- same time, getting extra paid by working fucking more than 48 hours a week is not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that shit ain't worth it. Like, I mean, your mental and physical health is not worth that extra. However, the hell amount you're getting. Exactly. And it's just like the fact that because like CD Projekt Red makes enough money any anyway, they get money from the Polish government because they're like Poland's biggest video games studio. I, is, I remember which is um, cool. like being like a gem of your industry in a country that surprisingly doesn't have a lot of video game companies is great. I think that's amazing. You do you. But at the same time, if you're making that much money, you can use some of that money to like i don't know maybe hire more staff so that i was actually listening to a podcast that that was um that was specifically Mm -hmm. talking about that and this actually goes back to uh proper product management uh so let's say if they need to add like another three weeks of crunch right um bringing on new hires specifically to help with that can actually serve as more of a detriment because you have to get people up to speed and that slows oh, okay. down your yes. current Sorry. workers. But Sorry, no, 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 you, you are, you are yeah. still, you are still right because Absolutely. what needs to happen, those new hires need to be brought on earlier. Before not crunch. Yeah, exactly. They need to be mm. brought on earlier in the process. So you, mm-hmm. you're, you're still right, Sarah. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't want to seem like I'm speaking out of my butt. Cause that's yeah. the last thing I want to do. Cause uh, big I dummy mode is not activated. Theory. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to like, I know nothing about the industry, but at least to me, one of the things, a company like that making enough money as they do and constantly getting grants from the government, just hire more people, have more people working from home, have more people like, what's the word, Um, not just from the studio, like, I don't, I don't know, it's just, it's just a heavy topic, and the way it's been perceived is you need to like handle the topic wearing like heat resistant gloves or something. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's really, yeah, I'm still not blocked by Schreier. So I'm happy. Yeah. Oh, he blocked me a while ago. It's fucking fun. Wait, I you're blocked care. by him. Hell yeah. I am. What'd you do? Defending Paris. Damn. I, I want to check Twitter right now. <laughs> uh, just an interesting tidbit before I do that. Um, uh, po- the Polish government is actually incredibly fucking proud of CG Project Red. I believe they had, I don't know if it was Obama. It was some it other. Was Obama. They gave it Obama. They gave Obama a Witcher too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like you're shitting me. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're just like, hey, look, this is what our country's proud of. This, this. Well, because so my tattoo artist, she's actually from Poland, and from what she's told me, the Witcher over there is like Lord Lord of the Rings or like. Game, yeah. even though it's not even made in America, it's like Game Game of Thrones or like Lord of the Rings to us. How like I'm, that was such a big fantasy thing for us growing up, or for us now. That's how the Witcher books were in Poland. Like like the Witcher's yeah. series is considered like a national treasure. 
mm-hmm. it became Poland, especially now that the very obviously well done Netflix show has gotten as big as it has, and the games that are, are really fucking good. It's considered like a huge treasure over yeah. there. So I can understand, weirdly enough, I can understand them giving President Obama the Witcher. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even give him the Witcher thing. It wasn't. Well, no, it, was, yeah. it was not yet. It was not yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, they couldn't even yeah. give him the okay Witcher. Yeah, they gave him Witcher too because they're they're so proud of it. Um, Which I mean, see, it's really hard because. I don't know. It's just a lot. Uh, just to cut in real quick, uh, I am not blocked by Jason, so I, I am happy for that. Okay, am, good, good for you. I am blocked by Colin Moriarty, which I am proud of. Good, good. <laughs> get him, get get him out. But no, I just think this whole topic is so extremely hard to talk about, but it also brought up, like I mentioned earlier, the whole l- liking something, but also criticizing it debate, which has recently I- come out. I think it's important to just not have. Uh, I, I I think the thing I bring it bring this up uh, up with most is probably like when people talk about consoles. Like I don't have fucking loyalty to shit. I'm gonna go see whatever gives me the gives me the most benefits or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like 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 fuck loyalty. If you do good, I'm gonna praise you. If you do, if you fuck up, I'm gonna call you out on it. Yeah. Like even me, like like I'm a little Nintendo drone, but. Um, yeah, I'm here. Like, I'll sit up. I'll, I'll sit up. PlayStation, Xbox, PC. I don't care. I just want to play the video game. You silly will you let, pony. Will you let me play the video game. You right, X bot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, th- I think the recurring theme for tonight is because I've missed Mesa so much, both personally and on the podcast, that mm. I'm going to continue to toss over to him. Uh, <laughs> Mesa, are you excited to play Halo Infinite this month? <laughs> Oh man, you know, I just finished five. I can't wait to see where the story continues. I mean, you know, I guess that's how Microsoft. Sorry, sorry, but I guess that's how Microsoft has has been like advertising. Like when 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 you, when you get your my console shipped email, they've been saying stuff like you can't wait to play games like Halo <laughs> Infinite. People are like, oh, asterisk. You gotta wait longer. Yeah, you gotta wait longer. Sorry, sorry. Continue. Uh, but so yeah, it's already previously been reported that uh, Halo is not indefinitely delayed it's it's slated for next year um but it has been reported that the previous uh project director chris lee is now officially stepping down from his role as the uh lead for the game Mm -hmm. and um so basically what happened after the entire game showcase where you know people called out the uh lack of of graphical fidelity and the lack of polish as well as my boy uh craig Mm -hmm. uh, craig the brute (laughs) Um, yeah the the internet the internet was not kind to uh to uh to halo infinite so basically they they had they had to go ahead and delay it in order to get it up to snuff and they actually brought in um fuck what's his name i i know his name by heart and for whatever reason now that i'm thinking about it where's my boy jason where is it not jason schreier no Oh fuck! I didn't write down. Uh, Jason Staden, that's his name. It's not in the notes. I just remembered. Uh, Jason Staden, who was a Halo alumni, he was there for Halos one through three as well as Reach. Um, he's he's back on, or he he's an exec, not an executive. He's a higher up at Microsoft that has come into. He has stepped in for this project in order to take over as a campaign lead in order to uh, get it up to par because. As Mesa, as you probably know, you've you've recently played um, Halo Five. Mm-hmm. While it was good, and while the gameplay was great, and most people oh. applauded the multiplayer, fantastic feeling. Uh, it was it was severely lacking in the campaign department, and so uh, I know for me, as a longtime Halo fan, going back to like uh, as Halo One released on the original Xbox, I don't want Halo to fall into mediocrity. I want it to kind of get that place back up as like, hey. This Halo is a big fucking deal because now it's kind of like in the realm of uh, uh, kids playing Fortnite. Just like Halo, that's a fucking old man's game, you fucking loser. Get, c- come do some floss dancing. But um, so yeah, C- Chris Lee has has officially stepped down now. He's kind of been sidelined. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether or not that's it, it, it's pretty obvious to connect the dots between um, the delays, as well as as well as Jason coming on. But 
it, it for me it just it just kind of makes like a, a big overcast over this entire project because this isn't the first time that a that a project lead has left the game uh both create former creative director tim longo and executive producer mary olsen had left production on, on the title last august and like having that many high people up leave um mm. so close to what the original release was supposed to be just spells that this game is in a lot of trouble and so i really really hope that it manages to shape up by release any any thoughts mesa yeah i mean i think that like um as um you know yeah as you said it was close to release if if like if it was releasing at the same day and he was leaving at the same time i feel like it probably wouldn't have casted as many doubts i mean if they were so confident about the release date um that the only reason why they're pushing it back is for you know graphical updates i'm sure that they feel comfortable with how the game plays then right right so i feel i feel i think to build off that like graphical changes what would it what would it necessarily be like you need like the, the creative director in order to do that um, as much as like just like the art department, right? So, mm-hmm. so him leaving is is much more indicative of like deeper issues that weren't necessarily shown at the showcase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I think ultimately I'm, I'm going to assume that um, Halo Infinite's okay, but if they have plans to expand upon Halo Infinite, I think those are probably in jeopardy. Right. I think the launch should be fine, but anything that comes after that, probably it's probably not looking too hot at the current moment. Is it too early to say make Halo great again? Um, I think it's too late to say that. Yeah, too it's late. too late. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck, should have done out. it yesterday. Well, I suppose if they want to make Halo great, they would add more Nathan Fillion into it. Give Nathan Fillion and Buck the uh, character he plays. Buck, give him. Give me a game of just about Buck. Please, yes, please. Let- Buck should have been the fucking squad leader in Halo 5. Uh, That's all I mean, I'm saying. I mean, it was very weird, because even though it was the face of the guy from, uh, from, uh, mm. Luke Mike Coulter, it, Mike it Coulter. wasn't his voice. It wasn't his voice, yeah. And it was super freaky to me, and, like, super, like, threw me off. Like, I was like, oh, that's Mike, that's Mike Coulter. Speaks, oh, that's not Mike Coulter. Man, I, I just <laughs> want <laughs> Halo to be, like highly revered again versus just kind of like a relic from the uh, previous two generations because at this point and um i mean this is still a high bar for the next time i'm going to say i think gears of war has maintained its quality over the years and four and five are just as fucking good i would say that's probably microsoft's best franchise at the moment Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like because to me something the thing i just can't the thing i just can't get into halo with is uh is is one and people are gonna hate me for this but master chief is a character like i just can't care about him enough to like if you don't count the books master chief is barely a character and they, he, and um, they try until, to make until him like four or five like, well they That's try to make true, him yeah. like and then they give him like three random friends and i remember i was playing with my friend and i asked him i was like i thought master chief didn't have friends yeah if you don't like, read oh, the they bo- gave him friends in a book i was like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i was like what the fuck is this he's like yeah he has friends i'm like it- if you only play the games, I, I I think it's in Halo. They say, like, you're the last Spartan. You play Halo 5. Like, uh, There's three so, of them. so that was a fucking it's, lie. It's because, like, to me, Halo is so all over the place and mm-hmm. not there story wise that I just can't put I can't get emotionally invested into it. While while something like Gears, Gears of War has done insane strives in like third person shooter storytelling that it's definitely i have to agree it's microsoft's best franchise i mean it's the reason i keep buying x xbox consoles literally just to play gears it's the reason i keep buying x xbox consoles so i mean i I think that says something i'm I'm sorry for six yeah and i mean it sucks that halo has gone so downhill because i know i have a lot of friends who love it and mesa i can tell that you really enjoy it too and it just sucks to see halo go so downhill when people were, are so i, I think into it's it. fine to give complimentary material to what should be like the mainline source like like obviously halo's main uh main form of media output is the games and it's fine to give complimentary stories via books or shows or mm-hmm. movies or whatever 
but it shouldn't be supplemental material where mm. this is like required reading in order to get into shit. And, and going off of what Sarah had uh, just mentioned prior, like I don't, I don't think Halo's bad. I, I just know it can be damn better. Yeah, and that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's that's what's the most disappointing about it. You know what's not disappointing, Mesa? What? The Switch. Hey. It's getting Hitman 3 and Control coming via uh, cloud, cloud editions. I'm still not super big on streaming games via the cloud. But do but you I, know how they're doing it, though? Vaguely. It so how they're doing it, if I remember correctly, you need you need to download the demo version of it, and you must play it for an hour till you're given the option to buy it. I did not know that. Was that also the case for Resident Evil 7, which I believe so, was the first um, case for this, right? I don't yeah. know, because that's in Japan only, but you can download okay. it from the Japanese eShop, though. So I can try to do that and give an update if I can get it to work, because I have Nord- a Japanese eShop account. But um, the one, but yeah, so that's how you can do it for Control, because Control launched the day of when they revealed it in the, in the Nintendo direct and then people realize you need to be able to play it for an hour and i think and people believe the reeves yeah people believe the reason why nintendo did that was because if you need to internet. make sure yes exactly you need to make sure that your internet can run it because if people just automatically buy it realize their internet can't, can't run it everyone's going to ask for refunds which nintendo doesn't give refunds yeah so not Nintendo's very, often, no. very I, often. I know I've able to get one out of them, but that was literally because I was like the nicest person I could possibly be. I, th- um, I, think, I think the slight advantage to Nintendo for this scenario versus, um, you know, streaming uh, fr- from a home network is obviously the Switch is portable. So even if your own home internet's bad, you can like maybe go over to a friend's house which, where it's superior. But the downside of that also being uh, you don't have an Ethernet port, which will yeah. radically improve that experience. So, like, the way I'm seeing it, you probably need to have, like, the best internet money can buy right now, or at least closest to it. Or, like me, be the only person using the internet for it to work. At least that's what I was getting I, out of it. I should I should, I should, should play the demo. I haven't yet. Um, so, like, I, like, for me, like, I love I, I love cloud gaming. I think cloud gaming is fun and funny because I had an on live account. I had a bunch of games on live. I was able to beta test um, what turned into uh, Stadia. Um, so like, I should, I should, I should, I should, I should be able to test that out because I was able to play on live, which this is in like what 2011 on uh, three three megabit down internet. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I was able to play Borderlands, uh, Assassin's Creed, a bunch of games. So, if if I if if this service is somehow worse than that, then then that'll be interesting. I I mean, even if it's not a hundred percent, I think it's just good to have that foundation there, so it can be improved upon by just you know higher net speeds down the line. And and I'll just never be mad at for having the option available there. Because Mesa, I think you you told the story. I think like on our first or second podcast, where for a while, uh, streaming games was kind of your own was was really your own your only option for for engaging with like new games so oh, I, absolutely I, so having that option there is absolutely be- like i would take a i would take a bad latency experience over no experience whatsoever mm-hmm. yeah because i think what people have to remember is that japan has a lot better internet than we do yeah. so for them streaming games on something like the switch is fucking easy like mm-hmm. i have a friend who beat resident evil 7 streaming it in japan like on the switch so it's like for them, this is no big deal. But for us, we're not at that point yet, internet wise. So I can understand why this might be a little bit harder for people. I mean, it's great that you can play something like Control on the Switch. Like that's fucking nuts to me. But it's also like it's it's locked behind the do you have good enough internet to do so type of thing. Do you know yeah. um like what the what the what the graphics quality is on like does it have ray tracing? Uh, no. <laughs> you want your switch to explode, Mesa? <laughs> I mean, it's, if it's streaming, it's just if streaming. It's streaming. It, yeah, I highly doubt it does. Yeah, I don't personally know, but I would be ninety nine percent that it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Interesting. Sarah, do you want to go ahead and take this next uh, news story away? We have some Final Fantasy sixteen details. Yes. So, um, when. Final Fantasy 16 was announced at the PlayStation conference. 
hidden deep, and I believe it was a Japanese interview, Square had teased that they would be putting a teaser site up in October that would explain the the story and the world details of six. And at the time, it was just going on the internet, and people thought it was just like a fan of a rumor. Well, jokes on them. It was legitimately true, and they Square Enix dropped a teaser website on uh, in like the beginning of October that literally explains all the important characters, every important part of the world, which I'm going to guess you're going to be able to go to all of them, and the main story. So, um, uh. In the Awakening trailer, which is the first trailer that was shown at the PlayStation conference, there is a young kid. He looks about a teenager, and there's an older dude. They they kind of look the same. Everyone thought they were the same person. It was confirmed that they are the same person. It's it's the main character named Clive Rossfield, which actually is like a so like not Final Fantasy name to me. It sounds like the character of like a Resident Evil game, kind of. Like- to, to butt in real quick, um, people were making fun of one of the character names a while ago. What was his name? Like Chadbert? Or something. Yeah, it was oh, so... like Chad Burt, and then the end up being a joke. <laughs> so yeah, so what, yeah, it's just because um he looks like um a uh, Final Fantasy fourteen character named Ardbert. So so there's not going to be anyone called Chad Ernie. <laughs> no, uh, but so uh, what people didn't realize, I guess it, I guess it was hidden in the Japanese version of the trailer. Like Clive called that younger kid uh, his brother, and people were like, "Oh, so it's his brother." And it was confirmed that yes, Joshua is his younger brother, who is dominant of the phoenix summon which i guess is like oh these people have these summons inside of them Mm -hmm. um and then uh josh can turn into the phoenix when he fights but the main i guess the kind of twist of it was that clive was expected to be the dominant but he wasn't and it was his brother instead so he was tasked to protect his brother um and the little girl with them her name is is jill who was actually taken from a warring faction state and like raised to like grow up and be like a uh I can't, I, if, I, if I remember she was meant to be like she was meant to grow up in the family and then sent to like sent back to her home state to convince them to like join the other family if i remember like it's so it's so weird like it's such a non final fantasy thing but it's incredibly mm. interesting and if people want to go to the website and dig into it there's some deep as fuck lore that like they're telling us really early surprisingly really early like they're just laying well, it all down well so as you stated like, hmm? I'm, I'm sorry go ahead mesa oh so, so the summons work like naruto uh so from what i could tell <laughs> the uh, I, I relate everything in my life back to naruto <laughs> <laughs> so from what I could tell from like reading into it and like rewatching the trailer and stuff, mm-hmm. the spirit of the summons are in these people. So it's more like Digimon season four. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, all Jinchuriki, you know, with the Jinchuriki inside, you can turn into it. But but then yeah. I guess like it, that's the thing. It's like if you kill these people, do you gain control of the summon, or does that not happen? Like, there's so yeah. many questions now raised by this like story update that they put yeah. out. But it's incredibly interesting, and if people want to like read it and get lost in the like speculation, like I would, like like I was doing, it has beautiful art on it, like beautiful art artwork of like all of the characters, and they look so pretty. It's just like it's Final Fantasy. You're you're, you're gonna look, you're gonna see pretty little looking people. Uh, going back <laughs> like, to what you're saying about those details coming out um, relatively early, uh, back is um, back to that SDGC. Uh, podcast uh, that you d- that you were on uh you rightly pointed out that the game's actually much closer to uh, a release date than uh, most people would suspect and you kind of called that out by by it having uh an english dub yeah so at the time when i'd seen the trailer between my tears because i that trailer literally makes mm-hmm. me cry because it's beautiful like the music everything i realized it was in english and I was like, that's so weird. Every time they they announce like a Kingdom Hearts game, it's always in Japanese with like English subs. Even the Melody of Memory trailer, original one, was in Japanese with English subs. And I was like, that's weird. Oh, that's that's kind of funky. And in my brain, I'm thinking everybody else has figured that out or like everybody else has like pointed that out. And I was recently on the SGC cast, not recently, but like kind of. And when we were talking about it, I pointed it out. And at the time, everybody gets quiet, and they go, "Oh, we didn't, we didn't realize that." And the chat grows super quiet, like no one says anything for like twenty seconds. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, everyone's like, 
oh and i'm thinking to myself like how the fuck did no one notice this like i'm like am i the only person who realized that this entire trailer was in english and when you think about it square especially i feel like english is some of the last voiceovers that they like shoot before the game's done and my suspicions were actually considered right because a recent job listing that went up on square's website pretty much said the base game's done they're just doing extra polish on boss fights and something else if i remember like it's like like except the base game is in a finished playable state they're just needing extra people for polish and for tweaking boss fights so like uh it's probably gonna release at the end of 2021 or like middle 2021 and when and when it does happen just remember that i was right (laughs) i I think in case for people that are somehow unaware uh sarah is pretty fucking smart and this is the equivalent of a sage mode from naruto oh i don't know naruto so i don't know what that means so thank you wow but yeah, like it's wow. to me to me, and to be completely serious here, if Square starts to do this more often, like starts to announce games and they're only like a couple months away or like less than a year away, I I would be down for that. Like Square announcing shit like ten years early and it's like, oh sorry, you had to wait fifteen years for Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> here it is. Like if they start doing it where it's like a game, Dude, they um, announce a game under a year and then it releases in under a year. I would be one hundred percent here. I think, but Beth- I think Bethesda is kind of the um, kind of the progenitor for uh, for kind of pushing that because what was it Fallout Four? They announced at E three and they're like, yeah, it's out in three months. Well, it's like to me, I feel like that was sort of a fluke because then that because then the next year they announced Fallout seventy six and then they were like, oh hey, we're also working on the Elder Scrolls six. Did it? Here and and no, Fallout and, and seventy six showed... came out twenty eighteen. I want to say. All I remember is it was back when I was at GameStop, and we had to ship back sixty copies of it. Ouch! Like we had to. <laughs> like I, I remember I had to pack up sixty copies of Fallout seventy six and slap them in a box. I won Fallout seventy six in a contest. And Hot you didn't damn. Even touch it, did you? I played it once as a joke. <laughs> Apparently it holds up a lot better nowadays. But um, but yeah, if Square starts to follow that model and they release stuff faster or they show stuff in more of a finished state. Because like another thing that people forgot was Fallout 76. Uh, yeah, not Fallout 76. Final Fantasy 16. That was a gameplay trailer. That was a gameplay and cutscene trailer. Like, And granted, there wasn't a HUD, but we saw gameplay. We saw cutscenes. They weren't like CGI shit. Yeah. Like that was legit in-game assets and in-game cutscenes. So I feel like if they start doing that more often and are like, hey, here's actually a finished product that's not fully done yet, but you can play it. Like I feel like it's definitely I think good I think Square is gonna get better release goodwill, kind of. At least we can hope so. Because I just really want 16 to come out. Like I've like if I wasn't already getting a PlayStation Five, I would be getting one for sixteen. I think you're pretty damn lucky that you've got that PS Five lockdown. Just as how I think anyone would be lucky to have a uh, Mesa as a trophy husband. Speaking of trophies, oh Jesus, <laughs> that was that was a horrible segue. <laughs> I mean, I give you an A for ever. Mesa's a pretty alright guy. So wow, okay. Put that on the I, resume. Pretty I, all right I, guy. I meant that in a way. <laughs> okay. I I am rated. Okay. You know I didn't mean it rude. That, you're, you're good. Yeah, Please put that on your resume. I'm going to feel yeah. bad for hey, us. Tell you what. Yes, okay. good night. You're good. Um, so for those that aren't wearing a wear, I'll make it part of my Twitter. <laughs> oh no! Uh, for those that weren't aware, uh, trophies have been uh, reworked on uh, PSN, uh, PlayStation Network for PS4 and soon to be PS5. Um, so previously, it f- it functioned on a level one to uh, ninety nine, and that's been expanded to levels one through uh, nine hundred and ninety nine. So everyone's levels have been scaled as appropriately according to the new uh, point system. 
um, so for those that don't know, there's bronze, silver, gold, and platinum trophies, each with their own uh, numerical value increasing with each um, with each tr- uh, trophy level. Uh, so it doesn't. It's not necessarily like oh, if you're level uh, thirty, you're not going to be like level three hundred. It, it's it's a little bit more skewed than that because they've they've uh, they didn't just use a multiplier for the for the trophy levels. Mm-hmm. Um, so for example, I have a pretty damn decent amount of trophies. I've kind of gone out of my way for a couple platinums. Others I just kind of just play a lot too many fucking games. Uh, so I was at a pretty decent level at level 29, uh, but now I'm at a 390 in the new system. And it's a little bit weird. Get I, I'm not used to the new system whatsoever, especially since I'm not actively trophy hunting any games at the moment. But the current or the old uh, trophy system was in place since about like 2008 or 9. It was a little late to the curve compared to... Um, compared to the 360 so like my frame of reference for like what's considered a good level now is like totally thrown out of fucking skew because on my friends list i'm 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 on the top of uh, my trophy level at the very least but now when i compare it to like other people i'm just like fuck is this a decent level or not i i, I don't know does, i mean i this- feel like i feel like this is a great thing because i i'm not a trophy person like i don't go out of my way to get them but that also means I, I literally don't have any platinums because I just never go go out of my way. But I've played a shit ton of games and I've gotten a lot of trophies. Mm-hmm. So I feel like now my level more represents wh- like the like the many games that I've played and the games I have put time and effort into to like get a lot of trophies. Because I think I'm at like 226 or something. I'm like around there. And it's going up because of all the Watch Dogs trophies. Yeah. So I mean like... I, 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 I like it because it at least shows the it, it more represents the the how long you've been with PlayStation 3 and 4 and how many trophies you have gotten. One part of the new system I really do like is that um so basically you'll be seeing your level bump up infinitely more often because with the old system I was like at level 28 for like years and I like it took me like so many trophies and like even a couple platinum so like finally get me over the edge to 29 so it was kind of like a big like oh damn I'm level 29 that's awesome that's cool but at the same time I didn't see any substantial progress aside from like a percentage mark that no one cares about Mm -hmm. so actually seeing more active uh, leveling up will probably be more encouraging to actually do more trophy hunting which which i do for like very specific games that i'm like really into uh what about you mesa do you are you a trophy boy not really i'm also relatively late to the ps playstation's ecosystem you know i got a ps4 in uh 2017 so um and i i didn't have a ps3 i only uh, i've um i've only had a couple things on my account, I'm already at um, is it 202? Oh wow, so that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, I guess I I play too much, but um, um, yeah, like seems 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 interesting. Seems cool. All right, we have reached at least what I've put in these version of the notes, the end of our news stories. So we actually have about 20 minutes to kill. Uh, Sarah, I know you had two topics you wanted to bring up. One being uh, delving a little bit more into your watchdogs experience, as well as your issue with the uh, with with the matting issue on the next gen consoles. Yeah, I mean, I'll go really quick into this second one because it's more of like a personal complaint more than anything else. With journalists getting their recent X Xbox consoles, I haven't seen this happening with PlayStation seen this more happen with the xbox series x more than anything else it's the way that the new consoles are matted to where fingerprints will literally show up as you take it out of the box like all the unboxings i've seen people instantly cause fingerprints on it like there's not even like like they touch it a bunch they literally lift it out of the box put it on a table and there's instantly the fingerprints where they touched it like it's not even like What's the word? Like, it's not even like it happens after a couple times. It happens after the first time. And as someone who has a condition where I sweat a lot, like I sweat pretty much uncon- unconditionally, I sweat in any type of environment, game 
peripherals and game consoles are always really hard for me because if they're pure black, I'm going to fuck them up. I've had to replace mice. I've had to replace controllers be, be, because of this. And the fact that consoles are focusing more on the whole, like, looking nice as aspect instead of focusing on, like, oh, we don't want these boxes to get fingerprints just from people, like, turn on the on switch or, like, press in the disc button if you have a disc console it's more like they're not paying attention to the fact that people with conditions like I do, which are a lot of gamers, a lot of people have that have this. It's more like they're not taking into account that a lot of us don't want to fuck up our consoles and a lot of us don't want to wear gloves to have to touch our consoles. Like, I'm just starting treatment on my condition literally for this reason. So when I have to, like, maneuver my X Xbox and stuff, I don't have to, like maybe wear gloves or like maybe be super careful because it's like i shouldn't have to i'm already paying 500 dollars for the for the fucking box i don't want to have to worry about getting it all gross and like fingerprinty mm -hmm. just all because i have to move it like an inch so it doesn't like heat up against the cabinet type of type of thing and i feel like that i just wish consoles and console menu manufacturers understood that i mean they never will so i know this is never going to happen but it's just one of those things where i just wish they would give more thought which is weird because microsoft themselves have given more thought to even making the xbox box and the system so accessible because of their work with the accessibility can can controller which is amazing and i'm so down for it and i'm proud of microsoft for doing such a such a thing but they couldn't even think about the way that they have their console built and the way they have their controller designed because the fingerprints were even coming off on the, on the controller too. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. It's not just the console. Like I watched, um, there's this journalist I follow Laura K Dale and she did an unboxing of it. And as she was holding up the controller, you could see her fingerprints just like right um, out of the box already fucking doing that. Yep. Wow. And as someone who obviously when you see me like wipe my hand, that's literally me wiping my sweat. I know it's gross, but it's like holding a controller, it's even worse. So it's like I'm now worried about touching my X my like black Xbox Series X can controller because it's just gonna get all gross and finger printy. So I just wish um, game game consoles gave more not gave more more of a shit, because that just sounds mean, but like gave more of mm -hmm mindful about how they create their consoles and how they create like it's like you don't need to put mat on it to look fancy like you're fine mm -hmm. you don't need to do that you you already have fake green tint on the top of it <laughs> to make it look like it's glowing like you don't need to do that hopefully that's it, something they can yeah. fix with like a uh with a revision but uh for for what it's uh for what it's worth and obviously this shouldn't be like the workaround uh, the Xbox One is fully backwards compatible with like all previous accessories and whatnot. So I guess you can just use your current Xbox One controller if that doesn't have. The and same I'm planning on doing it because I have the Gears Five controller, so it's not black whatsoever. It's just this really nice tinted silver. But it's just like I shouldn't have to worry about getting my controller and my console all printy just because I want to use a new controller and feel how different it is. Like exactly. I don't. I, I don't know. To be completely honest, this was more of a rant on my personal part hmm. than, I mean, I mean, than anything valid. else. Yeah, it's absolutely valid. But, um, and then on a different note, so I talked about last week, I've gotten farther in Watch Dogs Legion to the point where I finished one of the storylines, because the game, once you hit what I believe is the halfway point, you get thrown into four different storylines that you have to complete. Uh, you have Albion, which is the mercenary groups taking over London. You have Clan Clan Kelly, which is a game you have to deal with. You have um, Zero Day, which is the main villain of the game. And you have a hacker group called 404. So when you go through the 404 storyline, they're they a dark web hacker group. So yeah, the game goes into that line. Um, you get a... I'm just going to talk about this one mission because I can't get over how this one mission has stuck with me literally for like days. Um... Spoilers for Watch Dogs Legion, if people care. Um, do, do you guys care? Go ahead. Okay. I'm fine. Um, so there is a... When you do the 404 storyline, you find out that the hacker of, of 404 is like, hey, I have this contract on someone. You end up finding out that, that the contract is for this extremely smart computer tech 
woman. Like she made the AI that you're using, Bagley. She's working on this top secret project and the leader of 404 wants you to stop it. And your character's like, okay, what's so bad uh, about this? You hack into a building, you later find out that she's working on a project that will transfer human neurological data. So basically your brain into an AI. AI into a kim into a computer, basically allowing people to be Im, Im, immortal and yeah. stuff. You find out that she's doing this because her mother died of a neurological disease, and she wants to cure it, which is totally fine, perfectly valid reason. And when your character finds out, they're like, "Why do you want to stop this? This is actually pretty smart." And the character that you're working for says, "Go to her." mansion go into her house you'll see why she's crazy so you end up hacking into her mansion going into her house and her house ai starts to talk to you as if you're her so your character's like following what the house says you're like oh how do i get into the base basement i forget so the ai takes you into the basement of this person's house and you find out that it's super technologically advanced they basically built this like cottage in their base basement and the and the ai starts to act weird and the whole time that you're in the house you're using tech to see past events that have happened with this person and their mother and you find out that the person basically took their mother out of the old old folks home and is like no i'll be able to fix you here you don't have to be there any anymore and you're like okay well this person's a tech person maybe she found a way to help and through this whole mission there's no music it's deathly silent. The only sounds are like ambient n- noises. So it's instantly creepy. Like you walk into her house, it's stark white. The like AI is like weirdly talking to you. It's mm. super creepy. So stuff stuff happens. You find out that her m- mother dies. You find out that she killed her using like serum in 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 injections and stuff. And you're like, okay, this is really weird. Well, you later find out that she killed her mother to test her AI's functioning. And she literally puts her mother's brain into a computer. And this, in this, this probably room, won't change it. Just a quick question. Hmm. This, this probably won't change the morality of this. Uh, was the mother <clears throat> already dying? Yes. But okay. the, but the tech, I call her a tech wizard. Cause I can't give her the name for it. Hmm. She gave her mother no choice. Okay. Like her mother did not want this. Her mother just wanted to die. And so when you find out about this happening, you find four chronostasis tubes that have just normal random people's bodies in them. And there's binary in their files. You can translate the binary and you find out that they were all random test subjects taken off of the street, promised really good <laughs> jobs. Only to be tested and their brains thrown into an AI and fucked up. Holy it shit. is incredibly creepy. And it, it, it gets worse. So you find out, like, oh, the AI's the mom. And you're like, can you help us find this chick? And AI says, I will help you if you kill me first. And it is incredibly creepy. And the mother starts to get her, like, humanity back in the AI. And she's literally saying, kill me. And it's done in such a creepy fucking way. So fast forward, you kill the AI, you find out where the chick is, you hack into the Bloom building. For those who know Watch Dogs, they've been like the main villain throughout the Watch Dogs franchise. Yeah. It's always led back to Bloom. You find her in the basement of, of the Bloom building, only to find out that she's dying of the same neurological disease that her mother was. And she's trying to put herself into Bloom's main AI system to take over Bloom. So your character goes through weird hacking pipe style mini games to like shut off the portions of her brain the whole time as she's like talking and being like, who's there? Who's trying to shut me down? And the, f- and the mission ends with you getting the choice to kill her or to leave her alive and let her put her consciousness into Bloom. And this is a choice. You can choose. So personally, I chose to kill her because she's fucking nuts. <laughs> this is a hell of a fucking tonal shift from like the rest of like, oh, we're wacky hackers. Let's go ahead and do all this cool so, fun stuff in pig costumes and whatever. So- I don't know about what happens if you don't kill her. I killed her and I went back to my base to start another side quest. And I talked to one of the people in my base and your character starts to feel regret for killing her. She goes, we're dead sec. We don't kill people. 
And the person in my base was like, yo, she was fucking wacky, using like London slurs and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. dude, she was fucking nuts. She was killing like normal people. We did the right thing. But when you're picking what to do with her, she's like begging you not to kill kill her. She's like, I don't, I don't want to die. I'm doing this to save myself. Then you realize she's trying to literally put herself into Bloom's main AI system. And you're like, mm hmm. But the way that this quest is handled, and like Jose said, the way it comes out of literal nowhere, and the fucking 360 tonal flip from Watch Dogs going like, oh, this is how cool tech can be in the future, to oh my god, this is like a horror story of why we shouldn't evolve tech, is literally <laughs> done in such a creepy fucking way that if that's that, but if like, if that's the future that Watch Dogs wants to go down and turn it into this, like, weird pseudo-horror game to where, like, tech's gotten too far and, and yeah. dead sex trying to stop it from getting too, too far, I am 100% here. Like, it's the creepiest, most well-done horror mission in a non-horror game that I've done in a super long time, and it's gonna stick with me for a hella long time. Hmm. Like, it's, it was just handled... So and literally came out of nowhere. Like it was like it was like causing me like to feel super un uncomfortable. Like the whole final like in in the house when you find the bodies. Like it was legitimately super uncomfortable. Do you feel like it would have been just as effective if it was, if it was in a proper horror game? Like what was it, was it that contrast that added to it? I think it was the contrast that added to it because you know I wouldn't exactly call Watch Dogs Legion wonky. It's I was talking to Splain about this the other day. Mm -hmm. I compare it to how Quentin Tar Tarantino films dry humor to where there's an obvious message behind Watch Dogs, which is fuck the fascist. <laughs> and yeah. But they add such totally dry humor in it using the a AI, using like some of the like funny takedowns you can do. Like they add such a dry humor to it. So going from that to what this mission was just i think made it so much more creepy because i never expected a game like watchdogs to do that and handle it as well as they did mm -hmm. so i think that was honestly what made it so creepy and i i fucking want more of that type of thing i haven't started any of the other side missions so i don't know but just i want them to do that. like i said if they turn that concept into the like watchdogs 4 or like whatever it, it, it is i am 100 percent here for it and I think them continuing to use Bloom for all this stuff is maybe leading me to believe that that might be what, what they're going for. Because if they're going to bring Bloom back or... or Because I know there's there's a DLC mission that involves Aiden Pierce and Wrench yeah. from... Bleh, and Wrench from Watch Dogs 2. And they've said that that DLC mission is going to have its own storyline to it. Hmm. And from what I remember... Aiden, even when he was in Watch Dogs 2, because he appears in Watch Dogs 2 for like half a second, yeah. he's always been because it was something Bloom was doing. So a part of me believes that that's what they're going for, is that they're evolving Bloom to be this, this like, high-intense like, evil like, tech corp. Mm -hmm. That's like super, like, trying to, like, exceed human evolution. Transhumanism. Yeah. And plus, since one of the DLC characters is a trans human like uh how do i describe it like one of the dlc characters she can hack using her mind mm. like she can mind hack people and she's huh. and she's like a transhumanism experiment like that's literally all that character is so if that's what they're going for and like the next watchdogs to make that like a horror element kind of be like oh this this was bloom unregulated like they're making like humans mixed with tech I am all here f for it. And I'm all for like a dead sec being like, we can't have that. Cause that's just going to fuck up man, mankind. I'm here. I'm a hundred percent here. And what that mission did was it really elevated watchdogs legion to me mm. and definitely that's made good. me more excited to continue it. That's good. That, that yeah. sounds pretty exciting. Uh, Mesa, that's you want to, really you want to go over what you've been up to? What have I been up to? Not much, honestly. I continue to not do a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. Like, what did I even? I, I haven't even played anything, honestly. Um, how is I, how is your Street Fighter stuff going? 
I just haven't had time to do anything. It's, it's, it's oh, a travesty. No. <laughs> um, you know, I guess, you know, seeing the new AMD stuff has been pretty interesting. Um, I do plan on doing something, like, even, like, after the stream, I plan on streaming um, uh, uh, Just Cause 4 Ooh. today. I never got tonight. around to that. I never yeah. got to that either. Yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, like everyone, it's this kind of like this one that no one really pays attention to, and I have no idea what any anything that happens in it. So I'm like, I'm interested. All I know is that you have one of those flying squirrel suits. Yeah, you have the wingsuit. That freaking hook, grappling hook, hook shot, whatever it is. That that that's just cause to me. That that's it's so fucking beautiful. Oh yeah, just cause three is one of my favorite games like ever. I never played just cause three. I only played two. Oh, three is fantastic. Four is not, but three is amazing. <laughs> is there any reason why four isn't? Oh, it's just... It's just lame in every single way it possibly can be. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, it, like, it looks worse, plays worse, and what you what you have to do in the game is worse. So, probably just skip four, play three? Yes, absolutely. Damn, okay. Like, the, um... like... They try to do like a serious story in four, and, and it's like, why, why, what's happening here? I'm supposed to go boom, boom, and things go patooey. Like, what's happening? Like, why am I supposed to, oh, man, oh, my dad, he killed my dad. I don't care about your dad, bro. I don't care about Rico Rodriguez, who's apparently Italian's dad. He He's Italian? Yeah, Wait, it, Thru- just cause three takes place in his hometown, in in in, in this um, faux Italy, but his name is Rico fucking Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought Watch Dogs, oh, yeah, not Watch Dogs. I thought just cause four took place in like no, just cause three takes place in like a, like an Italy like place. Yo, I swear one of them takes it's- place in like a faux like. Isn't four the one with like an emphasis like on tornadoes, but it's yes. not even that big of a deal? Yes. I thought it took place in like faux S- Puerto Rico or like faux Spain or something. Maybe one does. I'm not sure. Two takes place in like faux Philippines, I think. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Three is like faux. So like, I swear one of them was like one of the islands. Yeah. Three is maybe faux I'm just Italy. Of something else. Cause- Three is, yeah, three is like a faux Italy, and four is like a like a faux. I honestly don't remember. I I beat that game and just chucked it out. I, uh, I was like, I'm done. I'm done with you. There, there is nothing quite like hooking, uh, like a car chasing you with a freaking uh, grappling mm-hmm. hook, then tethering it to the ground and just seeing the physics just fucking slam it. It's it, it's mm-hmm. beautiful. Like, like to like to let you understand, like I was like ninety percent done with just cause three and lost my save no. and i've restarted Ouch. and i've restarted it and i beat just cause four and, and chucked it out so <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah man. just cause four is just not the hoverboard's kind of cool you get a hoverboard in dlc and the hoverboard's kind of cool but the jetpack in three is a lot cooler so there's no real point okay you got a jetpack and a mech you got a mech. Yeah, you get like a, you get like this um like magnet hand that can suck up like ro- like cars and stuff. It's what the it's fuck? pretty cool. It's really cool. Just Cause yeah. Three is really fucking good. Let's see what what else you been up to? Is is that about it? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, it's cool that um, there's no reason to buy an Intel processor anymore. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, you you were pointing that out to me a little while ago. Like cuz like the new processors that that they announced this month and just came out 2 days ago. Um yeah, like all the reviews are coming out and the, there's there's no reason to go on anything else. Nice. So that's pretty cool. I guess to just kind of go over yeah. what I've been up to before we mm-hmm. kind of wrap things up pretty yeah. soon. Um I finished Yakuza Five, and hey. pe- people hey. seem to see, people seem to put it very highly on like their tier list or or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm giving myself a bit of a buffer before I go into six, just because those games are uh, they yeah. can blur together pretty easily. But I have to say, I don't 
I don't think I liked five as much as, as other people put it out. Like it has a lot of charm, but the pacing, like even, even compared to four, cause four and five both use the, um, they, they split the chapter up, ch- chapters up by characters and you, you don't really touch the characters again until like the end of the game. It, just the pacing and the way they tell the story, it is so freaking slow. Like I, I lost like so many details on what the threads were and the new play, playable character Shinada, the uh, the baseball dude. Like he's okay. His fighting style is pretty bland. But like like the whole like secret conspiracy behind like his little personal story. Like you get to the end of the game, you're like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? That that's like the a plot here. And and so. There's like a million betrayals as as per fucking Yakuza tradition. I, I um that, that I just like absolutely love like in like in Kiwami two or I guess like t- uh two proper. There's like four backstabs betrayals like back to back, and it's fucking beautiful with how stupid it is. But I, I don't know. F- five story didn't do it for me. It has a bit of refinement over four, but I think four just basically did everything better. Than, than five and uh i guess not neither of you guys have played it i but... personally am yeah but i have a friend who is the biggest yakuza fan so yeah, yeah. i just couldn't get into it i like i it, it's one of those things where i appreciate it and i love that i have so many friends that are into it, it i just couldn't get into it there, there is some wacky <laughs> shit to be had in uh in five in particular and like just the attention to detail with like all the super crazy uh side stories for each character like what was it uh kiryu you can go like on a six hour fucking tangent that has nothing to do with the main story where you're dismantling a freaking uh japanese fucking racing gang it's like fucking tokyo drift 2 you play as saijima and you go like on a six hour side quest of like you're playing fucking cabela in in the fucking snowy mountains (laughs) And then you're doing a uh, MLB The Show knockoff as a Shinada. So, like, there's, like, crazy detail, like, mechanics into what they do. Like, they obviously care what they're doing. But just, like, the pacing of the game is, like, non-existent. And the story just loses so many of its threads. It, it's probably one of my... I'd probably still put it over Yakuza 3, which has a bit of more of a rough start. Granted that, that it's, like, oh, uh, Kiryu is basically retired. Go chill for, like six hours mm-hmm. but but for me that kind of personally worked because i'm like come on my man's been through a lot let let him fucking <laughs> chill so it worked for me but five uh, i'd say probably just well obviously i'd say play all of them but i'd say four is probably better in that regard um what else have i been playing uh i i've been playing through hitman 2 and i, I played through hitman 1 which you can get uh, through the same uh, launcher, actually, so it's pretty convenient in that regard. And it's definitely, like, a great and wacky time. It gives you, like, some really unique... It highlights a couple unique ways on how to kill people, such as, uh, like, rigging this uh, this vehicle that's supposed to be used as part of, like, a training exercise. You can take, like, the emergency brakes off so it accidentally just, like, slams into the, into the instructor. And I've... Um, so, like, having those highlights in order to do, like, funny specific kills are actually pretty good if you don't want to spend hours, like, traversing through the environment trying to figure out, figure out like, how A connects to B and how C connects to, to F and whatnot. But at the same time, it kind of pigeonholes you to be like, well, you kind of have to stick to these things if you want to do the cool thing. Because you sure as hell can just pull out your... um your silenced pistol and like shoot someone from like a corner and where no one sees you. And like, you can do that, but it's just not as satisfying. But, um, I, I have found a couple dumb little tricks that do work. If you're disguised as like, let's say a guard who is authorized to, you know, like open carry weapons. Um, so if you have someone to the left and someone to the right, you need to get to the person on the right, but obviously you can't because his buddy's there looking looking at him. Uh, I have found you can just drop a gun on the floor and they'll be like, hey, d- dude, you can't litter there. You're going to pick that up? You can just be like, nope. And the other person will pick it up and like take it over to a little gun cache somewhere on the map, uh, basically <laughs> letting you just go in and go towards uh, the dude on the right who's now unprotected. <laughs> So there's a couple dumb little in-universe workarounds that I've made for myself. And uh, 
it will never get tiring just chucking an entire shovel as it just like rotates vertically through the air and just knocking someone out instantly. Uh, yeah. Have you have you guys played Hitman whatsoever? Like I'm, anything in the franchise? I don't do stealth games. I'm wait, not even I, Dishonored. Wait, no, no. Uh, I was terrible at Dishonored. Dishonored is so good. I, ever played, I was terrible. Like, Splinter Cell or nothing. Uh, I oh. played Conviction, but I played on super easy, oh. so you knocked out people with like one punch. Conviction so? is so good. You need to play Blacklist. Blacklist be on is super good. I, I couldn't get into Blacklist. I liked Sam more in Conviction, and I got Blacklist, played it, and I was like, ah, it's so weird. They, like, yeah. DH him. <laughs> no, well, the voice is really weird, too, but yeah. uh, just, like, from a like, gameplay point of view, Blacklist is so good. Oh, so good. My I favorite. couldn't get into it. I love the gas crossbow so much. Hell yeah. But uh, going back to Hitman, you, you said you touched it a little bit, Mesa? I've played, uh, I've played like, Blood Money. Uh, and I plan on playing the, the 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 these reboots. I just uh, I'm just waiting on the right time. Uh, I I, but I basically been slowly collecting them, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> waiting to <laughs> unleash them. I actually haven't. Um, I kind of gave up on playing through. Like I still had like three or four more levels because Hitman Two uh, of the reboot has more levels than uh, Hitman One. And and the reason I stopped is just because like yes, there is an overarching story, but I am not emotionally invested in it whatsoever so i'm basically just kind of playing these as isolated levels which you can absolutely do but my motivation to kind of do them is is, is basically just dwindled to like oh, yeah i know I, I spent money on this even if it was on sale but I, I i just not motivated to actually finish the thing yeah definitely uh, I guess the only I have some others. Actually, no, I have two other things to go on here. Um, I just kind of on the side. I've been pl- replaying Infamous Second Son, which I will stand by as a damn good title oh, in the franchise. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I think I, I pref- uh, really quick though. I I actually do have to head out. Oh okay. Because it's a bit late, and I need to be up for work tomorrow. Yeah, no problem. So thank you for I'm hanging sorry, out guys. there. You wanna That's you good. wanna you wanna sh- uh, pimp out your stuff over here? Um, follow, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I have a blog uh, out here in this open space at blogger.com. Uh, I haven't updated in a while just because I've been really busy and haven't been able to catch up and write stuff. Um, next week, I'm going to hopefully have early impressions on uh, Godfall, Bug Snacks, and the Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, hopefully, if my PlayStation 5 comes in time. Uh, and also a little bit on the graphics of the Xbox X, because I'll be replaying through Gears 4 and 5 on them. So, um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Uh, fuck, f- fuck Trump. We <laughs> did it. And, yeah, I, I sadly have to be at work early tomorrow. So. All right, Sarah, thanks for hanging out. And we'll Thank see you guys. next time. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Oh. There we go. Sarah's been upgraded to uh, black and white. Uh, been promoted to ghosts. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I guess I just have like two other little things to talk about, and then I guess we can wrap up. All right. But um, I yeah, Infamous Second Son is still like a fucking phenomenal game, especially since it wasn't a launch title, but it was pretty damn close. I think it was the February after, so it was like four months after after release. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as much as I like it, I think I still kind of launch default, window. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still kind of default to Infamous Two as my favorite Infamous game, just because. Mm you can swap between your different powers from like whatever different sources they were based on what decisions you made Mm -hmm. uh, versus second son, which kind of focuses more on improvising where you can only have one power source at a time, whether that's smoke neon um, video or in in the post game, you can get uh, concrete, concrete, which I I say it's kind of like a, you can advertise it as a bit of like of a, What's the lo- what's the word I'm thinking? Hop frog, leap frog, <laughs> hmm. leap frog. Um, but it doesn't really work in the sense that like the kind of progression they give you from the beginning of the game is you have smoke. You can kind of move around, but you can't really mm. get to rooftops without using very specific points. Yeah. Uh, so when they upgrade you to neon, you can move around really fast. You can slow down time. You can ru- you can just run up to the top of buildings. And then video is just kind of like the natural progression of that, where you're just 
dashing it like across the air you don't even have to like touch the buildings yeah and so once you as you get more powers you're kind of like disincentivized from going back to other ones unless would, like it's your only option i would say neon 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 still definitely has uh, its uses neon's still smoke, viable in that game there's no reason to use smoke the only the only real reason to use it is like for maybe like the cinder missiles that's like the r1 like little yeah like, expendable ammo one yeah but aside from that, it's just like, yeah, once you get the mobility of Neon and, and especially videos, like there's there's no reason to go back there's, whatsoever. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit of a problem with the game. Which for um, like the main advertised power, it, it's kind of disappointing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want my evil run through of that game. I, I haven't beaten it in evil yet, so I'm doing that. In I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in go Second ahead. Son. In Second Son. Um, I'm about... I'm about. I'm on the mission right before you um, either redeem or corrupt Eugene. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a fair way in there evilly. If I remember correctly, because I haven't, I'm doing a good playthrough right now. I haven't done an evil one in quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. I, if I remember correctly, smoke is a lot better on evil, at least for the uh, little shotgun blast you can do. Yes. It can, it can yeah. evaporate people. Um, yes. If you're if you're playing good, you have a much long. Uh. You have a bigger radius for. Um your smoke bombs, which allows you to uh, subdue enemies. Mm-hmm. And then you, if you get like headshots, like on weaker enemies, it kind of instantly subdues them, but that becomes very redundant very quickly. Yeah. I'm like, Cause like, yeah, once you get to neon, there's, there's the, you can almost always find neon around you. And right. there's almost no reason to pick smoke. I, I would say neon is infinitely better mm-hmm. on good because you, you can get slow down when you're playing good. I don't believe you yeah. can when you're evil. No, you can't. And um, if if you're evil with video, you can summon uh, demons. But if you're playing good, you can get invisibility, which lets you cheese a lot of fights. Yeah, which is pretty useful. But overall, both playthroughs are pretty pretty viable. Mm-hmm. Um, so you said you're at the Eugene part, right? Yeah. I uh I have a lot of annoyances specifically with Eugene in that game. Yeah. Where um, it's it's basically Delson, the main character that you that you play as, when he meets Eugene, who's kind of like positive, is, is like a '90s movie like nerd. I'm just like, really, are we going back to like this fucking well? Just like there's a chud going in, just like oh, you play video games, you fucking virgin. Why don't you try yeah. to get laid? So we're all here playing. We're all here with the PS4 controller in a goddamn hand, seeing the blue <laughs> light reflected back at us, and it's telling us to go outside, nerd. Like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, fucking I'm like, dude, fucking know your audience. Like, oh. what the hell are you doing? It's like so condescending. I'm just like, why? Like that part still fucking actively annoys me. hmm It's 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 pretty cringe. Um one slight little issue I had with the game is um so obviously you and me, uh for those that don't know. Uh, you had bought a new TV that's uh, 4K, 120 hertz compliant for next gen. And I actually yes. wanted to buy the exact same TV. And so I, I actually booted up uh, Second Son uh, specifically to test out the HDR because I know it looks fucking great on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the issue being uh, the <laughs> HDR specifically in Second Son makes the game way too fucking dark at night to actually be viable to play. Yep. And- yeah, it does. <laughs> It looks really fucking good, but uh, you can't see what you're doing. <laughs> hey, hey, guess what? When there's an evil playthrough and the sky is cloudy, <laughs> the sun doesn't help either. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it. so I I just wound up turning it off. Just like I'd, I'd rather be able to play than it look really nice. Mm. But unfortunate and... Uh, Hopefully there's another patch that, that might fix that, but it's doubtful the game came out back in 2014. Yeah. I'm not really holding out much hope for it. Like, it, it still is the quintessential PS4 game in my mind. It's, it's just such a solid game, and uh, I it's pre- it's maybe not as like great as I was hoping for what's basically the last um, infamous game that came out, if you're not mm-hmm. counting First Light, which was the uh, little a standalone yeah. game that was based off the structure of this one. But I, I would assume at this point, Infamous is basically retired. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not going to revisit the well. It's unfortunate. 
I was really hoping. I want an HD remaster of one and two. I, oh, I would absolutely. replay the fuck out of two. I was, eventually, I'm hoping for like a cold open at E3 one year, and like it's like Delson in a minivan, and you pop out the minivan, and he opens up the back, and you just see like stuff <laughs> for powers, and because all the different powers he's been collecting, and he just has little sources in the back of his minivan that you get to pick. I think that's such <sighs> an issue though with these games being. Um... Not necessarily the morality, but like the different endings is that they mm-hmm. pigeonhole themselves. Like for what yeah. was it? From Infamous one to two, they went with a good ending, and I think. Well, no, Infam- you can you can pick. If I remember I know, that, correctly, you oh, can no, oh, pick. You're right. One to two was you. You could pick what you wound up doing, but uh, I believe from two, didn't they wind up going with the, the, the bad ending? They went. They went with the good ending for after for a second son. Because remember what the 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 bat the what the, the, the oh the bat. yeah now I yeah. remember yeah yeah <laughs> it'd be kind of hard if it was the bad ending. Damn, it was either kill all humans or kill all conduits. That didn't e- actually work. Even if they do revisit the series, I don't see Sucker Punch necessarily being the developers because I think they've basically struck gold with Ghost of Tsushima, which mm. also I don't. S- necessarily see them making a sequel to that i think it's pretty wrapped up tightly okay i i've, I've been waiting for next gen to play it i, I, I figured, think that's a smart decision yeah I, I thought like hey this is a really good game while i love well, there aren't games for the ps5 quite yet for me to play you know yeah I, i'm specifically waiting until the ps5 for like my second um last of us 2 playthrough mm-hmm let's see and i guess the last thing to touch upon before we wrap things up is uh so, yeah, I, I was kind of feeling like eh on uh, Hitman 2 after a while. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let's, let's dig through my backlog before I start replaying stuff. And uh, just because I've also been making a concerted effort to actually get through my backlog, whether that includes games, movies, or books. As, uh, mm-hmm. as you know, I've been yeah. making a concerted effort to actually uh, continue reading through the Witcher series, which is fucking great and progressive as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it's actually really funny because of the TV. I've been making my way through Amazon's ad catalog. Yeah. Because uh, they're the ones that offer 4K HDR. Are without, they the only ones any, that do that via streaming? Without, without any extra, without anything extra. Because uh, my my uh, Netflix account doesn't support 4K. Okay. Oh, is that a separate thing you have to pay for? Yeah. You get, there's like three, there's like basically like three tiers. There's like the cheapo tier, the normal tier, and the upper tier. Oh wow! Yeah, the I, upper tier gives you 4K and two extra streams. Damn, I I mooch off my girlfriend's Netflix, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on my dad, so it's all good. It, it's just weird, like how even uh, like my old TV was going out. I'm going to my girlfriend, like, dude, don't you notice like these crushed black levels? That's fucking gross. You can't play a horror game like this. She's like, I don't notice anything. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I get this TV. I set it up. I'm going through the settings, turning off like light dimming. She's like. Why are you spending time t- time on this? I don't notice the difference. I'm just like, I absolutely do. This is 4K, dude. <laughs> oh god. But, but anyway, so yeah, I was di- I was digging through like my backlog, and I was like, oh yeah, I have Game Pass. Let's see what's on there. And uh, I forgot that Battle Toads was a thing, and that it had just come out, and apparently in August, the uh, the new one. And it is a fucking solid as hell, like beat 'em up. Like the the gameplay is kind of like whatever, but like the writing and the animation is like fucking top notch. Like this is something that belo- that belongs like it's obviously a relic of its time and from the uh, '90s. But th- this would straight up not be out of place whatsoever, like on a '90s Saturday morning cartoon. Mm. It, it, it it's very like Rocco's Modern Life inspired. It's it's fucking wacky and the voice acting and the writing is, is just so fucking on point that uh, even regardless of, I think the gameplay is just kind of like, eh, kind of like even middle of the road, uh, beat em up slash uh, sewer sewers, uh, bike gameplay. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think the story and like the animation, just particularly because I'm such an animation nerd. Um, I think that's going to carry me through. Yeah. It, it's a it's a solid game and i um that's good that's good to hear it, it's it's on game pass there's there's no fucking reason not to play it mm-hmm. and i think after that i think i might touch um tell me why man i, I re- downloaded i just have not same oh man i uh just sit down and just do it 
I need to. I, I need to stop doing podcasts and start playing games. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, well, I think that's about that's about it. Mm-hmm. You want to go ahead and uh, pimp your stuff out, my dude? Um, sure. Um, I'm going to be streaming. You know, because I kind of... So, I have this weird thing where I kind of dislike Twitch for no reason. So, I, I don't like to stream on Twitch. <laughs> I like to stream on YouTube. Um, you could do I'm, both. True, I could. I'm paying for it right now. Um, but, Are you already paying um, for multi streaming? For for a thing, yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, but I think I might. I, I'm I'm still I'm still I'm still undecided between picking YouTube or Twitch right now. I will be streaming, however, is youtubecom slash video game rem or remless TV on Twitch. Uh, I'll be either on. I, I will be playing Just Cause, not Just Cause. Far Cry Four with uh, my Australian friend, so that's gonna be really bad. Far Cry uh, Four is really solid. That that's probably the last Far Cry with like a decent story. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah. So just catch me in one of those places. Uh, follow me on Twitter at underscore Remless. I'm I tweet very infrequently, and I treat my Twitter feed as a curated experience. So, uh, if I I recommend it. I recommend me. Thank you very much. I, I also I also <laughs> recommend you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Thank you for everyone for stopping by, watching, listening on whether that's on Twitch, YouTube, and or podcast services. Uh, as you can see, everyone's ads are on screen. So go ahead and follow us on all the socials that includes Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. And yeah, that's gonna do it. Any, any final words aside from fuck Trump? Um, yeah, um, I can't wait in the week to say fuck Biden. <laughs> we got to bully Biden, dude. Got to make him more progressive. Exactly. Exactly, bro. <laughs> All, right. All right. Adios. Catch you guys later. Bye.